Members of Council, if you can please take your seats. This meeting is now resumed. We will now resume the debate on item MM 44.128, urgent consideration of the provincial government plan to reduce the size of city council. We will bring up the speakers list from Friday. Councillor Fletcher, point of order. A, a point of personal privilege, uh, Speaker, uh, and a point of order. I'm not sure which one, but on behalf of, of my whole community. And for the second time today, uh, or second time this week, councillors who have been at a press conference to speak about this very matter in front of us have said how we are dragging out council. Look how we're still here five days later. And I must say, Speaker, I am so very offended by these remarks. And I've just spoken to Councillor McMahon, who's come from the funeral of the beautiful young Reese Fallon. And Councillor Burnside, who's come from the funeral in Markham of our beautiful young swimmer. We have spent time in this council meeting, we have recessed it a number of times in order to respond to a tragedy, an unspeakable tragedy in the city of Toronto. Two people killed and dozen injured on the Danforth. We have recessed in show our respects. We have recessed to go to a vigil. We have recessed to go to funerals and we recess to go to the Danforth to show our support. This is not a council that is somehow wasting its time, Speaker, and I'm deeply offended. And I believe every member of this council should be deeply offended that was not at Queen's Park today saying the same thing. And I have to speak out about it. And I'm not asking for an apology from them, but I am saying that council is offended. And I cannot tell you the depths of my, of my umbrage on this matter, Council Speaker. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Fragadakis. Speaker. Oh. And she has given her amendment to Councillor Shan, who will be coming back at some point, I believe. Oh, he's, he went down the list earlier. He's not here yet. He could speak later. That amendment's being prepared. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor... Councillor Mamaliti. Councillor Shan's here now. But he took his name off. Oh, he, he put it at the bottom. Oh, never mind. This is getting yeah, prepared. Yeah. Councillor looking out for my Scarborough homie. This is getting prepared for him. So what about Councillor yeah, Fragadakis? Councillor Fragadakis is not here today. Okay, Councillor Mamaliti to speak. So I, I've had the pleasure of coming back from Queen's Park uh, uh, this afternoon and uh, clearly have shown my support to, uh, to cutting council. Um, and I've also learned very quickly that there is, really isn't much we can do about this. Um, it is the province, after all, who's, who's making the changes. So anyone who plans on standing up and trying to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not going into the millions, to get into an argument that, isn't, that we're not going to win at, uh, I think just shows a real clear reason why the Premier is, is doing what he's doing. And I must say that we've had a lot of dialogue in this place and a lot of debate, <coughs> and I have never ever seen the backlash that I've seen uh, from some members in this chamber about the changes that are going to happen. And when you look at, at who's making that, uh, that, those comments and that negative dialogue, and it's those that may uh, be losing their jobs. I might be losing my job. We all might be losing our job. But at the end of the day... Uh, please, no applause in the council I know chambers. some people might want to see that. But at the end of the day, there's appetite for, for this, uh, including my own constituents who want me to do this. And, and I ask myself the question, knowing that I can go into an election and losing, I'm still doing it. I'm still up here saying it's the right thing to do for the taxpayers. I'm not being selfish about it. I'm saying we have to do this. And then I ask myself the question about others that clearly might be losing their job and the logic and the reasoning for the fight that's happening not only in this chamber, 
that you're posing, but outside this chamber too. I know exactly what's going on with some people. And then I look at some of the, 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 the decisions that we've made. One of them was cutting the police force, cutting jobs. Who supported those cuts? The same people that stand up here and say that we shouldn't be cut in half. Why is it okay for you to stand in your place and cut the police service in half if you could? But when it comes to your own jobs, you don't want to do that. I can give you hundreds of examples of manufacturers that have lost much, many of their, 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 pro, their, their productivity and their work because of decisions that were made here in the council chamber. I can give you logic and reason as to why I'm shaking my head here, wondering whether or not the same people are trying to, that are trying to fight for their jobs voted in favor of getting rid of those manufacturing jobs. Why is it that we stand up and not have a problem with other people's job and cutting them, but when it comes to our own, we have some difficulty with it? Because at the end of the day, that's what this is about. You can use the argument of democracy. You can use the argument that it's the best thing for communities. You can do all of that. But you know what gets lost in the taxpayer's mind and the people uh, who are watching and, and, and talking about this in the living room? It's that they can't figure out why we can make it work at a federal level with 25. We can make it work at a provincial level with 25. And why we need more than, more than double at a municipal level. Yes, yes, at the end of the day, 47 is what we, we were looking at doing. And I've got to tell you something. I've got to say this uh, as clear as I can. The Premier has the same gut instinct that Mel Lastman had. Mel Lastman had the ability, through his gut, to read the public. And he could very easily, without talking to anybody, come into the chamber and know exactly what the public wanted to do. Mel Lastman, who I sat beside here along with all the other mayors, had the best gut instinct of anybody that, I'm, that I've known. And he can come in here and say, no, we're not doing this today because I don't think the public wants us to do that. And he would fight tooth and nail based on his, on his gut feeling. The premier of this province has that same gut instinct, whether you want to believe it or not. Rob Ford had that same gut instinct. He had it as well. It's not something you're taught. It's something you're born with. And I can tell you this, it is. I can tell you this, this Premier's got that knack. And for those of you that don't, wanna, don't like him and want to rally yourselves with a couple of hundred people, by the way, that you were able to, able to muster up thanks to the union uh, on Friday, uh, there were only a couple of hundred people. Councillor Mamalini. At the end of the day, Mamalini, fight as, as long as up. you want. Councillor your, your time's up, Councillor Mamalini. Councillor Troisi. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On Friday, I asked the city solicitor a series of questions about provincial powers and the timing of a possible referendum. From her response, it's clear the province's decision is a done deal. For those who believe in a smaller or larger council, let's be honest, the process is flawed and the timing was extremely bad. But there really is nothing the city can do to reverse any decision made by the province. We need to move on. My life's focus has been public service, so I'm going to work on the daily issues of Ward 28. The people in the communities of Regent Park, Moss Park, St. Jamestown, and Cabbage Town have some incredible challenges of safety, poverty, housing, and a need for expanded services. Our youth need opportunities to succeed, and we must get rid of guns from our streets. When you appointed me as councillor, you honoured me and my community. I was one of the first councillors born and raised in Regent Park to serve on council. As one of 13 kids with a father with muscular dystrophy, I grew up knowing poverty. I wasn't a professional politician looking for a job, just a public servant looking to do more for people who grew up in my neighbourhood. <coughs> and I hope that in the coming election, others like myself will step out from their neighbourhoods to bring their unique stories to this chamber and this will truly represent the many communities that make up our great city. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I've noticed that uh, members of council are putting their name on and off, on and off. So, um, Councillor Ford. Well, thank you uh, very much, Madam Speaker. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be very brief with this. Um, I think what... Uh, I, th I think um, what we have to discuss here, and, and I think it's very uh, along the same lines as Councillor Mammolini mentioned, is that I think time and time again we have heard that this is going to happen. So I, I'm not going to rail on the politics of this. We can, we can sit here, we can debate, 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 uh, 25, 44, or even 100. I, I don't think that is what is in front of us. Um, so. I first want to start off, uh, of course, by uh, thanking the Premier and the Government of Ontario uh, to move in this direction. Uh, it is something that I have supported since the first day of being on Council and, and now uh, being on here for two years. Um, I, I take it as a very welcome uh, change that is needed here. Um, but what we need to be focused on as a Council is the path forward on how do we um, set the stage for our city, uh, our city clerks, our chief electoral officer to carry out this election because we know it is coming. And in my questions uh, to city staff on, on Friday evening, um, there, there is no doubt that they said that there is a challenge uh, with administering the election, but in no way, shape, or form, they said it was impossible. A list that has been provided uh, from the city clerk um, has made its way through our city staff and what they deem to be issues, but it's also made its way to Queen's Park, where the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and, and all the senior bureaucrats over there has given uh, the commitment from what I have heard to our our city staff. I'm going to love to ask the question on the four, uh, floor council, but that's no longer an opportunity. But they have said that they will give all the resources that are needed to carry this out. So in order to carry this out, yes, we need the province at the table. And from everything I have seen, uh, they are at the table uh, to help roll this out for an October 22nd election. Um, the other thing we need to do is give them the resources from City Council. I, I thank the Mayor for placing that motion, uh, to, or I think, I, th I believe it was the Mayor, yes, uh, Mayor Tory for placing the motion to give the resources they need to carry out um, this election. Now, what, one of the big debates that I have heard here is about the referendum. Um, I 100% support going to the communities to our communities, the people represent on a number of issues. But what, what I am going to say is I do not, I strongly do not believe that a referendum is needed here. Um, the referendum happened on June 7th when this government was elected with one of the largest uh, majorities in this province's history. And if we were watching the same campaign and same election, I heard very clearly from this Premier, from this government and MPPs across the province, that's about reducing the size and cost of government. And then when I draw a connection, this is absolutely in no way, shape or form um, outside of that. We are a creature of the province. Um, so I absolutely believe with full confidence um, that this government is governing for the people, representing the people, and what they have heard. I know, just in, in my area alone, I had a number of events this weekend, including Environment Day, where people came up to me. I did not hear one person opposed uh, to this government's direction. Um, so I will wrap up with saying, uh, I think there are a, a couple good motions here that I will be supporting, and um, I think we need to look at the future uh, how do we um, adapt to, I guess, the situation we have been put in, which is doable, and move forward? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holliday. 
to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have a motion I'd like to place. Should be no surprise. Um, I'd like to see Council express its support for reducing the size of this Council. You know, as a first term councillor, someone who's been here for just over three and a half years, I've been able to observe things. And nothing, nothing prepared for me what I observed in the last six months. There's this long joke that I've heard amongst staff, media, and councillors that it's election season, it's silly season. And some of the things that I've seen in this chamber are amazing. Some of the soapboxing, the speeches, the maneuvers, the 128 members' motions to try to get everything fit in just before the election so it can go onto a brochure. It amazes me. What amazes me more is I sat and I looked at people in this chamber. And what I saw on Thursday night when I guess there was a Twitter, um, Twitter feed that talked about perhaps some changes coming from the province, I thought about the Kugler-Ross model, and that is the, the five stages of grief. There's denial, there's anger, there's bargaining. I saw all that, I still see it going on. There's depression, and there's acceptance. And I think where this council's head has to be is understanding acceptance, that a province is moving ahead on something. What are we doing to prepare ourselves for it? There's an election coming up in two and a half months, the clerks have outlined some concerns they have. They're very capable and intelligent and uh, hardworking people. What are we doing to make sure that they're ready to administer this election and that there isn't a contest on the results afterwards? Those are the questions we need to be asking ourselves. I know that the mayor has put a motion to put some resources forward. I urge everybody to support that because it's very important that this body supports our staff through that election. You know, people say, oh, this is, this is new. You know, I, I talked to my dad about this, and, and members of council know that my dad sat in this room for many years and has a lot of political experience. And he smiled and he said, you know, back in around 2000, I wrote a letter to Minister Clement, and this was just after amalgamation, when there were 57 councillors, and that government reduced the council to 44. Well, as my dad told me, Minister Clement read part of his letter in the House as he was making an announcement regarding this. It's just unfortunate he didn't go farther in his own estimation. But here we are in a natural form of succession, making that change many years later. It's my dad's birthday tomorrow. I think it's a great birthday present because it's something that he talked to me about for many, many years. I just keep hearing these things about, you know, it's going to be more work or something. You know, councillors make $114,000. That's more than most people make in this city. We have office budgets of $30,000. That's more than many household incomes in this city that are spent on newsletters and expenses and other things. I think we should be working really hard here. And you know, people talk about effective representation. Pull the voting record. There's 4,268 votes that are recorded in the system. Ask yourself how many of those you have cast. That's what you're paid in the chair here to do, to read the reports, to be ready for debate. But most importantly, the thing that I want to leave everyone thinking about <laughs> is the silly season that led into here and the maneuvering the things that went on. Well, if this isn't done before the next election, on October 23rd, the next four years of silly season will start as each of the councillors are thinking about how to stab each other in the back so that they can win the next election. That's a miserable thing to have to live through and is not a service to the public yeah, of this hold city. Hold on, Councillor Holliday, hold on. Councillor Davis, yes. Eric, uh, Speaker, I find this member's disparaging remarks about the people who have been elected by the residents in their wards to represent them here unacceptable. And I want him to withdraw those remarks. If he so despises this role, why are you even here, Councillor Holliday? Why are you even here if you have so little respect? To cast 4,000 so for what we do votes. Here. That's my job. You withdraw. How many did you cast? Right. Okay, Councillor Holliday, please, please try to keep it down. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will wrap up and just looking forward to the future. Thank you. We do have questions for you, Councillor McMahon. Clarification of the motion. 
Thank you very much. And first, I would just like to make a comment that I would ask that you refrain from talking about five stages of grief when we've just buried two Danforth shooting victims. Okay, please. Thank you. My question is, do you have, uh, how many business improvement associations do you have in your ward? Shh. Shh. Madam Speaker, I'm sure the, the council can go look that up. I don't understand what that has to do with my motion. How many residents associations do you have in your ward? Yeah. Councilor yeah. Shiner, I have the floor, and it is a clarification. Uh, 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 Councilor Council Council Shiner. Okay, hold on. Councilor McMahon, that's not clarification of the motion. I'm asking. No, just ask the, a question on the motion that he's presented. Councilor Peruzza. Councilor Peruzza. Councilor Peruzza. Please. Please. Councilor McMahon, please just on the motion, with please. Do the job. With regard to cutting council in half to 25, I am asking, it's a, it's a comparative of workload. I'm asking all the things about BIAs, if Councilor Holliday has BIAs in his ward, business improvement associations, if he has residence associations in his ward, if, do you do a newsletter, a weekly or monthly newsletter? But Councilor do you, McMahon, do you host events? Are you on social media? Councilor McMahon, do you have, how many development applications would you have? Arena boards, Councilor McMahon, AOX, please uh, emails and phone calls Councilor to compare McMahon. as to why we cannot. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. Sorry. We have to stick to the rules. <laughs> Councilor Shan, clarification of the motion, please. Ma Madam Speaker, I just wanted to ask, uh, the motion doesn't mention anything about the year, so I want to be clear, uh, Councillor, through supporting your motion, I'm also supporting the fact that election could be changed halfway through. I, my motion just says I support cutting council in half. By supporting your motion, Councillor, do I also support that 500 plus candidates who have signed up their rules would be changed halfway through? Would I be supporting that? Yeah, I don't know what that has to do with 500 candidates. <laughs> um, be because really? because your motion is before this council. Councillor Shen, I uh, your, you, your motion is asking the council to be cut into 25. I'm just asking if this motion proposes that that we move into a different campaign. Tell all the 500 people who signed up that you know whatever you did, all is void. Now we're going to start a new campaign halfway through. Councillor Shen, his motion is very clear. He, is he, what clear. his motion is, is to support the province's uh, direction to, um, to cut the council to 25, period. Nothing to do with the 500 candidates. Ma Madam Speaker, uh, so it doesn't please, mention. Please, on that motion. No, Madam Speaker. It's not clear. Yeah. The, it doesn't mention the year. It doesn't mention when it is. I'm always willing to debate number of councillors, and, and, and so, but I just want to know what the context of this coming now. Is it for this year, if that means it impacts the candidates who have signed up as well? Would you like that answered, Madam Speaker? Yes, please. Thank you. Well, I did say in my remarks that I'm supportive of getting the, this dealt with as soon as possible because I don't want to see four years of fighting amongst councillors thinking about the following election. That's Madam my Speaker. remarks. Kate, thank you. Madam Speaker, yes. um, I just want to understand the logic behind the fact 48, 47 councillors would be fighting, but 25 councillors will not be fighting. Does it mean the uniform <laughs> group of people who think the same way are going to be elected in the next council by these 25 councillors? Is it going to be one way thinking people that's going to come later? I think the remarks were uh, aimed towards a future reduction, and if it isn't dealt with sooner than later, then the fighting amongst the councillors will go on in this arena rather than the election out there. And that's a problem. Okay, thank you. I believe the question's been answered. Councillor Fletcher, you were up on a point of order. Yes, I do actually, Speaker. And I, it's very difficult for me to actually raise this, and I hope you'll take it in the uh, best way. But on Friday, I would just ask you to be as neutral as possible in your interventions because on Friday, you were at a press conference called by a number of councillors in the members' lounge to completely support these actions that are taken by the provincial government. And I uh, would, uh, while you do have the right to do that, you also are the speaker of this chamber and must represent all members of the chamber. So I would ask you to be very careful in how you're dealing with questions that are concerned about 
this action taken by the provincial government thank to undertake you. Thank that. you, uh, yes. Councillor Fletcher. I've never kept my opinion uh, private. It's always been public. Right. Councillor Fletcher, do you have a question? Well, to no, I have another point. Do you have a you question to Councillor no, Holliday? No, I have, first of oh. all, a point of order, which mm -hmm. is that the Speaker's role, to my understanding, is to be the neutral body when th uh, of Council, and that I understand you have a personal opinion and a political opinion, but you have a higher calling from this council, and that is to be the speaker and to represent the fact there are many different opinions at City Hall and on City Council. So I'll just make my point in that way, and then I'll ask my questions yes. of, of council. And that is why when we had the outburst on Friday, I was trying to control both sides. I'm so, I'm Councillor Fletcher, you have I'm a question to Councillor Holliday. Speaker, again, Thanks. now I have, must deal with you one more time, yes. because after making my point, you now are saying there was an outburst and so you did something. I'm speaking about you as the speaker of this council, the overarching leader, and Thank at you. a press conference. Councillor Fletcher, so I've it. taken your comments. Thank you very Thank much. You. That's can all we I want to hear, that you're taking my Can we continue with the council meeting Thank rather you. than delaying it? Now, Councillor Fletcher has a question. Councillor Ford, do you have a point of order? You stand yes, up? Madam Speaker, um, I would suggest uh, through you, Madam Speaker, that if the member has a concern with uh, the way you are overseeing council, that she give um, a, a reference to something this speaker has not been impartial on. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ford. I, I would really, I would really like to continue with this council. Can, I would yes? really, I think we should really thank get you. on with business we of are. the city. We are. Okay, Councillor Holliday. There's Councilor a question Holliday? by Councillor Fletcher. Yes. Councillor Fletcher. Um, this says City Council expressed its support to the province to cut City Council to 25 councillors and a mayor. Did you mean for the 2022 elections, Councillor Holliday? I didn't specify. I just said it express our support. That's pretty clear, isn't it? In my remarks, I was very clear on how I felt. No, I'm so I wasn't. I wasn't as clear as you were in hearing that. So uh, 2022, and I just wanted to ask you that. We are currently in an election period for mayor, correct, May 1st. We are currently in an election period for councillor for October 22nd with 47 awards. Do you acknowledge that? Um, I'd have to check what the legal definition is for an election period. <laughs> but we well, are in an election I cycle sorry, and I, I, would, and I would acknowledge that. La laughing. I can't please, if yeah, I can I know, ask like the public to treat, try to keep it down, please. I just need to hear that answer, sorry. But I'd like can to you make repeat sure that, that answer, Councillor Holliday? Well, I, I, I admittedly would have to look up the precise legal definition of election period, but I would admit that we are in an election cycle. Election period. Did nominations open on the 1st of May? Yeah, I believe they did. And the nominations were closed on the 27th for 47 seats. Is that correct? I believe that's true, but... And there's no legislation as of uh, 2.30 on Monday afternoon, so technically we are in an election period that hasn't been changed in any way, except for an announcement that it might be changed. Would you agree with that? Sure. <coughs> so you're asking us to change an election period uh, after... Do you remember how long we debated? I'm not asking any of that. I'm asking, You're asking uh, council to take an opinion on the matter. You're asking council to support that. I'm asking council to take an opinion <laughs> on the matter. And how did you vote on the ward boundary change? Obviously, you voted this way. Sure. Did you not? Yeah, I believe I placed motions that were similar to this effect. And they were, f and they failed. Yes, I believe they did. And That's they what failed the record at the shows. OMB as well. I have nothing to do with the OMB. Oh, you didn't go there. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mamaliti, questions, clarification of the motion, please. You're suggesting that we cut ourselves to 25, not in half, and agreeing with the province in doing that. <laughs> Agreed. And uh, would, you, would you kindly share to me how many calls we've gotten over the weekends, and at least in your office, that are telling us that the, the province is doing the wrong thing, or emails? Just a handful. Uh, so that would be pretty consistent with, with my Just office. Uh, and, and so, so uh, sorry, I, I get some heckling going on here. Clarification, please. 
Councillor Mamalidi, a clarification of the motion. Yeah, it's 25. Yes. And it's, it is the right thing to do for what reason, Councillor Holliday? No, that's not. That's because this place will run much better and more yes, importantly, yes. What I've worked very hard um, to do over the I last think, number of years. Okay, hold on. I think that we're just getting a little bit, you know, we're, we're using the questions. Do I have an ability to ask questions? Yes, I know, but on the motion, clarification of and the I motion. And I just asked only. him why he moved it. Yes, yeah, but he explained why he moved it, Councillor Mamaliti. It's, it's very clear. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this again because I think that these questions. But are ask on the motion, please. So the motion is to cut ourselves to 25. Do you believe that we're going to have a much, a much better system in place that will have uh, every councillor yes. in this place with 25 yes. with something that they can do, whether it's committee, whether it's uh, and, and, fe and feel like they're actually participating in the administration? I do, and I don't yeah. have a problem with asking councillors to work just a little harder. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think that we've exhausted that question. Uh, Councillor Campbell, are you going to ask something no, different? No, I'm not, I'm not going to ask my okay. colleague from Etobicoke the merits of his motion. <clears throat> I, do have a, I do have a question on how the governance model in this uh, place might operate. Executive Committee has eight councillors, Community Development has five members, Economic Development five members, mm -hmm. Government Management five members, Licensing and Standards five members, Parks and the Environment five members, Planning and Growth five members, Public Works five members, Affordable Housing Committee, Audit Committee six members, Budget Committee six members, Labor and Employee Relations six members, uh, Civic Appointments Committee has uh, up to nine members. Uh, there are the five nominating panels. There's the Toronto Community Housing Corporation which has six members. Toronto Hydro, uh, Hydro Corporation, three members. Uh, Board of Health, six members. Exhibition Place, uh, four members plus uh, designates by the Mayor. Atmospheric Fund Parking Authority, two members. Toronto Transit Commission has seven members. The Zoo, three members. Uh, there are various um, disabilities issues committees. Uh, pension bo boards, occupational safety, CNE, and the list goes on and on. Toronto Conservation Authority. So the question is, the uh, question is, is the intention with 25 members to still staff these and govern all of these important bodies in the same fashion? So I uh, am familiar with a number of those committees because I've sat on a number of them. And, we, we all, uh, that's it, we all. Yes, and I, my records are, are public on which of those I've sat on, and uh, I don't have a problem doubling up my meeting load. We make a lot of money here, and if they need to work harder, then that's the job. So the I'm glad to, to okay. compete for it. All right, so the intention is that all of these boards will be staffed in the same fashion? I, as the I, 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 think, I think we will have to work out the governance of this as a council, but if it means working a little bit harder, so be it. Okay, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my question. Uh, Th thank you. Councillor Perutza, clarification of the motion. Uh, I just, uh, I just want to ask uh, my colleague why he would want to, through his motion, applaud the provincial government uh, when they have clearly, clearly uh, stepped into our area of jurisdiction and basically have made a decision uh, for us, that's clearly our decision to make. Why would you applaud somebody who comes in and basically uh, uh, you're getting paid a lot of money, but you didn't get to make this decision. They made it for you. And why would you applaud someone like that? Well, because they control the legislation. They're the ones that make this decision. Okay, so, so let me ask you the question it's just the slightly differently because you're, you're, you're clearly not understanding it. Um, so. If, for example, you are a duly elected member, being paid lots of money, given an, an authority and given an area of jurisdiction, and someone comes along who has the power, but clearly not the moral authority or ethical authority to make that decision for you, but does it for you, you applaud them? No, I've put it before council to take a position on the matter. And we're either going to take a position in for or against. Let me ask you another question, another way, same question. Sure. 
That government, that premier, has the power to change each and every decision you make here. All 4,000 votes that you take every single year, they have the power to come in and say, nay, yay, I, I change it. So every time you vote on the wrong side, you and your daddy write a letter to that premier and say, change that decision because I didn't agree with it? Councillor Peruzzo, what is your question? That's my question. Him and his daddy write a thing because, oh, I didn't like the, I didn't like the way that decision turned out. So I'm going to applaud these guys because they're going to step in and make it for me. I get paid lots of money, but you make the decision. I'm not really sure what he asked. <laughs> it was a good speech. Not clear, is it? You said earlier in your remarks that your daddy <laughs> didn't like the representation around this oh, place. Please. No, and he I decided, mean, well, he said it, he said it, but he didn't use the word daddy, he used the word dad. Oh, I'll counsel. take away the, uh, the Y and the, and the extra D. Okay, um, members of council. That's the question, okay, Speaker. No, no, there's, I think, no, I think we're going to have to recess because I've informed the public to try to keep it down, no disruptions. No applauding, and you continue to do that. If you continue to do that, I have to ask everybody to leave the council chambers. No heckling. The rules are very clear for everybody. And I'm being fair to everyone. Okay, thank you. No, Councillor Peruzza, you've already asked the question. No, Councillor Peruzza, that. This is your them. last question. Yes, absolutely. Is it your intention, sir, that every time you disagree with a decision taken by this council, that you're going to write a letter to the Premier and say, please step in and alter that decision because I didn't like the outcome? I didn't write a letter. This is a motion about the position of council. Th thank really you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's move on. Oh, yes, Councillor Mamalidi, I know you wanted to make an end. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just to lighten up the mood a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> I, I'd like to introduce a, a very special person to me that's, that's in the chamber. And it has been a few years since she's been in the chamber, uh, I guess, w watching Dad work. Uh, and that's oh. my daughter, Isabella, who's behind me. Uh, and the last time some of you saw her, including the mayor, w was probably in her in her in her Stroller. in her stroller and and she has grown up to this place she's grown up to all of these faces around this this circle and I just love her to death and I just want to I'm, I'm so happy she's here yeah. I know I embarrassed her again um, councillor Pasternak clarification of the motion uh, yes thank you uh, madam speaker uh, through you to the mover uh, I'm assuming your um, motion is referencing 25 councillors because that is uh, mirroring the federal riding distribution uh, in Toronto? Yeah, I uh, looked at uh, what the press release said on, uh, I guess, on Friday. It says, current 25 provincial and federal electoral districts. That's what it says there. So if the Federal Election Boundaries Commission under the Electoral Boundaries Readjustment Acts uh, recommends in 2022 to move that to 28 or 30. Would you support an increase? I guess we'll have to see if, I mean, you're talking hypotheticals and that would be partially something that the province would have to work out if they're making these changes here. That's not what I asked. I asked, you are basing your decision on, deci on your motion on decisions made under the Electoral Boundaries Readjustment Act and the Federal Election Boundaries Commission of Ontario. Well, my motion is pretty You're, clear. You it seem to cut support them. You are supporting 25 councillors. It's yep. clearly in your motion. I'm just wondering uh, if they then decide in two or three years to move that to 28 or 30, would you, would you uh, support their decisions? Yeah, I don't have a crystal ball. I have to see it when it comes. We'll have to figure that out as a council, and that's, that's life. Things change. So is it, can I assume you're respecting their, their council, their legal opinion, and their judgment when it's 25, but you would have doubts if it goes up to 28? I wouldn't assume anything. I'm just dealing with what's here before us right now. Well, I'm sure you've read the Constitution. It makes for a remarkable late-night reading. Uh, would, you say, would you say that a federal representative is doing the same kind of work as a municipal councillor? 
uh, well, I think in my personal experience in dealing with different orders of government, they do different work. They do different work. Sure. So why would we why would we mirror the federal government when they're doing quite different work, actually? Why not? Why not keep it simple so that uh, people understand their electoral districts and alignment amongst them? Well, it's the uh, same, uh, when, same, uh, when we did ward form. boundary review, we were told to look at Supreme Court of Canada decisions regarding the definition of effective representation. We held pretty closely to that interpretation from our consultants. Are you moving away from those decisions now? Well, I mean, I think you'll have to figure out how you feel about the motion. But I'm asking and, you uh, these questions. Right, but and you don't, you don't. But well, the motion's pretty clear. You either support 25 or you don't. And so, if you have a reason that you don't support 25, then make it in your speech. But uh, I'm not helping you reach it. You make the choice. The motion's before you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for not answering the questions. <coughs> Councillor Davis, clarification of motion. I'm just trying to understand. Um, some of the rationale behind the motion. Um, you participated, Councillor, and provided input on the options report for the Toronto Boundary Review, and there was consultation on that review. There was input from the public. There was input from councillors, and there was a recommendation in the end mm -hmm. to adopt a 47 ward model and within our jurisdiction under the City of Toronto Act we made that change. So why would you support a process that did none of those things? That had no consultation? Your daughter's there. That has no consideration of the factors that were required to be so count, assessed. Oh, Councillor Davis, why, please. Why would Counsel, you support Councillor? Okay, hold on, there's a point of order. Councillor Campbell. Please put an end to the yeah. questions on the reasoning yeah. for the motion I'm and trying. the rationale. I'm it's, uh, I don't know why anybody needs too much clarification. Well, I needed some, at least that were valid. All their names are there and they want clarification. Well, but you know, it, asking why a member is yeah. placing a motion is not clarification of a motion. I got cut off for it. Thank you. So, Councillor Davis, please, just clarification of the motion. Why would you not support the recommendation that has gone through a complete process of consultation, has met all of the criteria set by the Supreme Court decision, um, and has arrived at a duly debated and approved recommendation. Councillor Davis, that's still chamber. not clarification of Why? the motion. Why would you recommend 25? Yeah. I have something, question, you cut me off. Oh. Please, Councillor. If okay, you think I, that process was flawed in any way, let me ask you that. And that's why we need 25. But that's not clarification Thank either. I mean, I think that Councillor Holliday has answered that question. I don't know how, m how clear. Can so, Councillor Wong Tam, do you have a question on clarification of the motion? I do, Madam Speaker. Okay. Uh, and through you, thank you. Uh, my question is the City of Toronto Act requires a final decision on any changes to wards to be made by December 31st of the year before the municipal election so that the number of the wards and their boundaries are clear to voters and the candidates during the election year. Do you believe that this change from 44 to, to 25 uh, made last week by way of announcement, do you believe that uh, that number one it now contradicts the Municipal Elections Act which I just read to you? That's a good question for the solicitor. I'm, I'm asking uh, you. My motion says uh, City Council expressed its support to the province. You either support it or you don't. Well, um, I'm, you, I'm not you, here to debate uh, the, the legal ins and outs of a decision. Those are for legal experts. I guess uh, You need to take a public policy decision, and you'll have to figure out your own rationale as whether or not you support it. It's well, pretty my, clear. My, There's 19 words in front of us. My, my question is about the legality of what is happening before council. Better go talk and to the, the fact that you are moving a motion to support what may be an illegal move and a contravention of the Municipal Elections Act. That's what my motion is about. That's what my question is about. 
and what, what, is it, what is it you would want? An, a legal analysis from me? I mean, I think uh, our solicitor wasn't able to provide a crisp one the other day. So no, my uh, if that's what you're looking for in the questions, uh, you know, I can't provide that. You'd, you'd have to go speak to a, a municipal lawyer. And I think that there are many people having those conversations. I was just hoping that since you moved that motion, perhaps you can explain why it is that you would be in agreement of contravening the municipal elections Count, act. Count that's okay, Ma Madam Speaker, I have, I, have a, I have two more questions. Regarding the 25 ward proposition, which is exactly contained in your motion, um, one of the reasons the consultants decided against the 25 wards was that it was going to fall outside the plus or minus 10% variance, which will then change voter parity and effective representation. Uh, you probably remember reading that uh, report, correct? Sure. Okay. And that, by the year 2026, um, Don Valley East, for example, and Toronto Centre North, which will have some of the smallest populations, will then see an extreme difference between the largest wards, which will then be Etobicoke Lakeshore by a difference of 50,000 residents, meaning Etobicoke Lakeshore will then be disenfranchised if you vote for the 25 uh, ward system. Are you aware of that? Uh, I, I'll take it uh, that what you've read me is correct, so. So, so in effect, your motion for the 25 wards is going to disenfranchise, disenfranchise voters living in the new uh, riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore by at least 50,000 people. Okay, thank so you. That was your last question. So I, I can answer. The, the answer I can give is I understand that uh, voter parity moves with time. And I suppose that you will have to take and figure out which year you want to take the snapshot in. So. Without the analysis in front of me, I can't confirm or deny what you're saying here, but... Um, that, yep. Councillor Wong Tam, that was your last question. Councillor Karagiannis. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Through you, motion. my colleague. Would you be willing to have a friendly amendment that says in the future, as the boundaries federally, provincially, the redistribution happens, that we follow that redistribution? Um, I, uh, as long as it doesn't uh, push the, the date forward, uh, Madam, uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, would you tell uh, my good friend Anthony there to allow me to answer to ask the question? Councillor Peruzza, please, can you please? <laughs> Councillor Peruzza, please. Put my time Try and hold. not to be rude. Put my time and hold, Madam Speaker. Thank you. So, Madam Speaker, I really have not had a chance to read the, the proposed legislation that I understand has just been tabled. So, I couldn't tell you if there's a mechanism already built into that. What I can tell you is today, I think. Uh, the 25 councillors is better than 44 or 47. And that's really what the motion says. Uh, through, through you, Madam Speaker, to my colleague, 25 is today. In 1988, it was 20 when I got elected federally. Now it's 25. As, as the population of Toronto increases, redistribution gets done every, after, uh, after, every 10 years after a census. Would you be willing to support something that says that in the future, as the increase happens, we align ourselves to the federal, provincial, municipal boundaries. I think there's merit in understanding how that mechanism would work. So, uh, you know, without deciding on the spot, I think it's worth looking further into the legislation, but that is a concept of merit. And uh, I think that would make things much easier for the public who has to have to constantly uh, cope so with changing So would you be willing boundaries. to consider a friendly amendment? Uh, depending on what the amendment says, if there's a thought about a mechanism going forward to try to set the boundaries uh, in alignment with those, I think that's worth looking at. Okay, so if I was to amend your motion, you have absolutely no, no well, I, I think I'd like to see the detail of the amendment. Fine. But there okay. is merit in the You'll thought. You'll see it. You'll see it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Peruta. <laughs> Councillor Peruta. I'm asking you, please, Councillor Peruta, to keep it down. Councillor, Councillor, Councillor Cole, thank clarification you, of the yes, motion. Yes, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, just to clarify the motion, you've chosen 25, I'm assuming, to mirror the 25 federal and provincial writings? Uh, yeah, I took the word 25, or the number 25, from the press release from the government. And, and is some of the thinking behind that that it will make it uh, easier for people to understand, uh, voters to understand who their councillor, MPP and MP would be and how that all aligns? Well, I can't speak for why the federal government, excuse me, why the provincial government chose that, but they did reference uh, the configuration of the 25 provincial and federal electoral districts 
So logically speaking, there would be um, an easier understanding by the public. I think I mentioned that before. And so, and so would you be willing to extend that logic across the province and uh, see a scenario where, say, Waterloo would have one councillor or Barrie one or two, uh, and, uh, and ex extending that same logic that you just outlined and fairness to apply across the province of Ontario? Well, I think that's a provincial policy question, and you should ask them. But you're, you're opining on provincial policy in your motion. Yeah, but would you, would you be open to us opining on a, a province-wide policy as opposed to a city-specific one? You can opine anything you want, but I, what I would say is that the city of Toronto is very different in terms of many of these other places. We've seen that statement before in this chamber, and uh, I think that the 25 is a solution that works for this, uh, this city. But you're not willing to use similar principles for any other city or jurisdiction in the province of Ontario? Uh, I don't make that decision. If you'd like to write a letter, um, go ahead. And, and just, um, I know this is a necessary clarification, but you just noted that city of Toronto is unique and different from other municipalities? Yeah, that's what we've heard Thank before you. in this chamber. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Mahavik, clarification of the motion? Yes. Um, just on a process uh, perspective you, you know it's fine to have a view that you want 25 45 whatever the number is but do, do you think that the province the premier has gone through a fair process in um, while at the end of the day over while well, coming into uh, municipal jurisdiction with this uh, with this proposal is it a fair process do you believe that it sounds like something you should address in your speech to council but my motion is I'm asking clear. you a question yeah, it's but not it's not question. clarification of my it's motion. I don't speak theory. to process. I speak to the idea of 25 members of council. Yep, Either you agree with it or you don't. Well, uh, it's no. kind of a yes or a no. Please, I, you know. Clarification of the motion. A point of privilege. Uh, Councillor Mahavik, like, it's clarification of what the, uh, the councillor yes. has before us. And I do think it's germane, so, and I'll so, explain why I think it's germane. Okay, because one might say... Maybe you can that do that, that when you speak, Councillor Mahavik. Yeah, uh, Councillor Mamlidi, point of order. You know, it's on this point. I mean, I, I stand up and try and ask some questions. I get cut off. The microphone gets shut off as soon as I ask. you ask me to sit down for exactly the same reasons. But for some reason, Councillor Mahavik gets to play it out as long as he, he can. I think there's fairness that needs to be that needs to be uh, you know kind of adopted in this well, I'm place. I'm trying right? to be fair. Sometimes I'm told I'm not. Oh, uh, Councillor Mahavik, clarification of the motion, please. Uh, yes, the reason why the question is important, Madam Speaker, is because one may have an opinion on the appropriateness or not appropriateness, but if his motion was clarified that having gone through an appropriate process that we go to 25, that might gain more support than saying, okay, right in the middle of the ball game, you change direction. So that's why I'm asking that question. Uh, if, if that helps clarify, well, I was, I'd appreciate uh, an answer. Pretty clear in my, uh, my remarks that I think it's of benefit to make sure that this is dealt with before the next election. The timing is the timing. Okay, thank, hey, you. thank you. I think um, we've exhausted that question. Councillor De Bearmaker to speak. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. Um, I was a city staff member uh, at the time of amalgamation. And the number of elected representatives just in the city of Scarborough was reduced from 15 to 10 a 33% reduction in the number of elected representatives in Scarborough. But I would challenge people to say to me today that they do not have as good representation in Scarborough today as they did 20 or 30 years ago. That somehow, because of a reduction in the number of councillors, they have less service, their calls are returned slower, the staff don't respond to their pothole complaints or garbage complaints or rooming house complaints, uh, slower than it, than it did 20 or 30 years ago, I would actually submit to you that the reduction in the number of seats in Scarborough has not ended the world. And then let me jump out to, the, to this city, south of Steeles Avenue. At the time of amalgamation, we had 58 elected representatives, and at the time of amalgamation, uh, through the Harris government at the time, the number of elected representatives fell from 58 to 44 seats. Many people at the time, because I was there, I was a staff member, I was at all the public meetings, many people claimed 
the world was going to end, the vibrancy of the city would end, the ability of people to participate in government would end, people wouldn't be able to talk to their local councillor, would, there would no longer be a sense of community, that councillors couldn't make proper decisions because they wouldn't be uh, in touch with their residents. Those people who said that were wrong. That has not happened. In fact, when the megacity came here, my memory's correct. I didn't have a cell phone. I don't think anyone I knew had a cell phone. I was not uh, on email um, very actively back then. We did some for city business. YouTube wasn't invented. iPhone wasn't around. Twitter wasn't around. Instagram wasn't around. So for people who say to me, you know, I just don't like going down to 20, uh, 25 because of the, we're going to lose our vibrancy. I, I profoundly disagree with them. The ability to contact any one of us, especially say in Scarborough, your local Scarborough Councillor, is much easier today than it ever has been in the history of the City of Toronto. If you have an iPad at home or a computer, you can send me an e email instantly. And people get upset with me if I don't respond to the email on the same day. People, can, uh, people are on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're, they're on the, the websites. These tools that we have today mean that we're all going to be well taken care of. Councillor Thompson and I are both from Scarborough Centre. We both go to the Canada Day Parade together. We sit in the same car, we walk the same routes, people come and say hi to us. It is unfortunate that per, for me personally, that perhaps one of us may not be here in the next election. But when you go to the next Canada Day, there will still be a councillor from Scarborough Centre, and anybody who wants to talk to that councillor will get their fair hearing in front of that councillor right on the sidewalk at Thompson Park. In fact, many of us councillors in Scarborough actually chase our constituents. We go to the bus stops, we go to the GO stations, we go to the subway station, and when we see people like, oh, there are some constituents going towards the bus, quick, I've got a flyer to give them. In Scarborough, we're literally chasing our constituents. So in terms of customer service, for the people who say to me, the world is going to end, that democracy will be denied, I simply don't believe that. I have been in this chamber for 15 years, and I have to say I have seen the dysfunction. We have all seen it. And if you're honest with yourself, it's not just a matter of things are slow. I accept slow. That, that you know, there's a lot of debate and a lot of different ideas. I, call, I, just, I can only describe it to my friends and my families when I go home as you wouldn't believe what happened at council today. It is just totally dysfunctional. When David Miller was in office, there were people who would do anything they could to stop him no matter what. And when Rob Ford became mayor of this city, there were people who would do anything they could to stop him. Now we have Mayor Tory as our mayor, and there are some people in the chamber who will do anything they can to stop him uh, to make him look bad, to make accusations on the floor of council, to jump up and say things that simply are untrue and have no basis in fact. Sometimes our points of order, like we've just seen today, are points of, of lecture, points of discussion, points of rudeness. This council has become dysfunctional. On Friday morning, I came to work this past Friday. I came to work. I came to work to work. There were 15 items left on the agenda, and people jumped up and said, well, I'd like to talk about my own job first. Let's suspend the order of business, change the order of business, because we want to talk Thank about our you, own jobs Councilor first. Thank you, Councillor DeBermaker. Your time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor DiGiorgio. Councillor Davis, please, don't disrupt. Councillor, okay, Councillor DeBermaker, please. Councillor DiGiorgio to speak. Madam Speaker, I, uh, I don't know where to start. This, uh, this is one of those things where if I were to categorize the kind of change that is being proposed, it is known as transformational change. It is known as very, very significant change occurring. And it takes me back to my previous history. One of the real transformations transformational changes that occurred in the field of education was when all of a sudden the education system in the early 90s was told we're eliminating grade 13. And in the process of eliminating grade 13, what happened was that there was a transition period. It's transition period that I'm, I'm most an expert at. I'm an expert at transitional planning. And so if I were to make a motion today regarding this item, I would say to you that the right 
composition of council is 30 seats. Five of the seats that are being added on to the 25 is really to make the five designated deputy mayors elected positions. And I suspect that when the provincial government, when the provincial government revisits what they're doing in the regions and they're saying, well, we want to review making appointed regional chairs elected chairs. Yes, they will come forward. And at that same time, I believe that they'll make a comment on the composition of Toronto Council. Now, in the meantime, I believe that it is <coughs> inevitable that we need to move to a council comprised of 25 members. The provincial government has all the power to make that change mandatory. There's, most of you have said we are creatures of the province. We are elected bureaucrats. We are not elected politicians. We are not a level of government. We are, giving, we are given marching orders by the province. If the province says this is the policy, then through council, through the mayor's leadership, we need to implement to the best of our ability the policies that are enunciated by the province. We are the city of Toronto. We are the economic engine of Ontario. We carry a special burden for all of Ontario. And yes, we are treated differently than all the other cities. Now, I've heard comments say, this council is in an ordered state. We function very well. We listen to people. And all of a sudden, the provincial government is throwing us into chaos. The other side, of course, says, this council is in a very chaotic state. And the provincial government is introducing legislation that represents the first step in introducing order to a chaotic situation. There are some of us that mean that way, and I'm one of them. I'm one of those people that knows that the changes being proposed need to be implemented so that we can deal with important issues. And going forward, the issues that are important are how do we prioritize the expenditures that we're having to make. We can't keep spending at the rate that we have been spending. We cannot keep spending at the rate that the municipal land transfer tax has allowed us to spend. Because if the municipal land transfer tax stabilizes or starts to disappear, we are going to be in that chaotic state. So what this seeks to say is the motion, sorry, the, the legislation seeks to do is to say, look, you've been, talk, you've been talking about what happens. What do we do when the land transfer tax all of a sudden disappears? Peter Wallace told us we, we were running into a danger zone. We better start to prepare for it. This is the first step in preparing for it. Because we were not, now, we all know, we all know that the other way we can do it is to say, well, the best way to keep spending at the rate we have been is to just increase the property taxes. But we have been increasing property taxes. The land transfer tax is a targeted property tax. Some people have been carrying the burden of paying more property taxes through the municipal land transfer tax. Not all. Not all people carry that burden. But if we start increasing property taxes, Let's say three years down the road, we're going to say we're going to increase property taxes 5% at a time. I can tell you that I will be proposing, well, those people that have paid the municipal land transfer tax in the last 10 years, they shouldn't be hit with that property tax increase because you've already targeted them. So that's, those, are, those are fundamental. I've, I've heard people in the city, they're saying my property values are going up 100% a thank year. You. We, thank, we need property tax you. relief. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor De Georgia. You're over time. Thank you, Councillor Palacio. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will support uh, the motion by Deputy Mayor Holiday. My position on this uh, issue, Madam Speaker, Members of Council, is not about protecting, holding my job as if it was my right or is my right, or something that I'm entitled to is uh, this not a job for life? I've been blessed and privileged to serve the great community of uh, Davenport, World 17, for 15 years, and that's a real right. And uh, it's a real privilege, not a right. This is about doing the right thing for taxpayers, not for us. 
we all know that this city council is dysfunctional, very political, and chaotic at times. This is about finding efficiencies, reducing waste and duplication. This is about prioritizing what residents want. They want community safety. They want us to look into it. They want transport to keep on working on the transportation aspect, improving city services, keeping taxes low, and so on. Now, within the current 47 wars as it is, and with the collapse of three wars in the West End into two, during the last couple months, I have spoken to thousands of people out there. And, uh, and let me tell you, the silent majority out there, they are very confused, even with the current boundary lines that we have there. So within that confusion, in terms of the boundaries, what they are asking me and what they, are, what they want to see is, you know, something that reflects <coughs> that level of functionality, a council that gets things done and puts <coughs> ratepayers first, and this is not actually happening. I've been a, a strong supporter from day one about having a strong mayor system in the city of Toronto, as we have in other parts of North America. We have in New York, we have in Los Angeles, with veto powers, and that's what we need, because the mayor, as head of council, should have those additional powers to make sure that his or her agenda are going to be carried on. As we all know, for example, in, in Los Angeles, with <coughs> 10 million people, they have 25 and, uh, city councillors. Here in uh, uh, Toronto, we have 25 MPPs, 25 MPs, and I don't see for the life of, my, uh, for the life of uh, for me why we can function with 25 city councillors. I did serve during the metro days, and we served two wars at the same time, and I was an executive assistant by then. I was able to do the job efficiently. Why? Because I've been very accessible as I am now, as I was then. So what we have in terms of consultation with the community, that's something that bothers me a lot. When the concept that was implemented of having the, the new model, the 47 city councillors, I did ask that very question. And through the, the topic of your community council, we ask to have a referendum, to consult with the public. And that, is, uh, and that uh, proposition was shut down in these council chambers. How fair was it by then? And how dare we, at this point, to bring that, that part forward and to say, you know what, well, we have to go and consult with our communities? When I spoke about that, and when the local community council where I belong to at this point, we ask very clearly, please give an opportunity to our residents to be part of the decision making. It was a top-down approach, forced down the throats of our residents. And that's not right. I've been very consistent from day one in terms of reducing the size of uh, council. And that goes back to Thank you. Your 2012. Time's, your time's up, Thank Councillor Palacio. Point in order. Councillor Fletcher. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Just, uh, just to correct one thing, I think it's important we have correct information here. And the City of Los Angeles has 15 ca city councillors in a metro organization and 96 uh, councillors representing neighborhood councillors for 114 <coughs> representatives in the City of Los Angeles, Speaker. Thank you. Councillor Shan to speak. Madam Speaker, I have a motion to amend uh, Councillor Fletcher's motion that adds a date for the meeting as well as uh, uh, changes the language a bit. Uh, 
the debate about whether 47, 44, 25 is an important debate to have, and it's good that we are having that debate. And I'm, I'm all willing to have that debate, and I think there are clearly points being made for, for, for pro and con around that. But let's talk about what's happening here. And I, I came into this uh, position about a year and a half ago after an incumbent was there for 25 years. And I feel a bit connected to candidates, including the candidates who are trying to run against me in my ward as well. When people prepare them, when people you know, fundraise, when they have uh, taken time off, when they have decided to work in a particular area to unseat an incumbent, or even to come into a seat that's become vacant, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. A lot of uh, family sacrifice that goes into it. A lot of hard work that goes into it. And that, that's part of democracy. And I think we've defined the game. We've defined how this is going to be held, how the election is going to be held. And for the integrity of the election to be changed halfway is total disservice to the candidates who have put. And these candidates are not anybody else. They are Torontonians themselves. Those 500 people are Torontonians. And those 500 people have teams of hundreds and hundreds of people who are Torontonians as well. So this is an important discussion to have. And there, their uncertainty, their plight has to be taken into consideration. And the other piece is, is around diversity. You know, we had four, way, four new wards, we had few vacant seats. A lot of young people, a lot of uh, racialized community members were vying for those seats because it is hard to unseat an incumbent, and we know that. And by changing it to 25, those folks out of here, those 25 that are going to make it a lifelong job. If you want to change, and there are many counselors who got up here and said, this is dysfunctional, this is dysfunctional. Okay, let's take a collective responsibility of dysfunctionality. All of us give up our seats, and let's have a new, people, new set of people come in. Would we be willing to do that? Because dysfunctionality is the function of every single member, and it reflects every one of those people who called out this place as dysfunctional. Because it is very important for us to have spaces for discussion. More people having an oversight, or, or if counselor salaries is the problem, cut it into half and let people who really deserve some of these jobs apply and come in to manage these things because people need to see new people coming here. They don't just have a party structure to uh, come into an election and win. So when you make it double the size, you're making it harder for new people to get into city council and it becomes the same group of people that will make those determinations because there's no party, double the amount of fundraising to unseat, and, and people with the last name, people who have uh, passed on from father and son and uh, daughter and husband and all those people will continue to be the councillors in this area. It is very important to f focus that we need to make council, the local democracy, work for people who want to come in here. Scarborough has 632,000 people. Markham, just north of my ward, has 328, almost half of it, with 12 councillors. And we want to cut Scarborough councillors to uh, half the size of their six which means under representations in committees, you know, how many of us are going to be able to uh, be representing all the different committees? How many of us are going to be able to be there for the voices? So having more people is important for Scarborough to have the voice that they need so that they can be heard in various decision making. So in effectively by cutting it into half, you're going to get underrepresented. We have one woman out of 10 counselors in Scarborough. And you know, there, there, there has to be diversity of voices in our decision making, and it's important for us to keep that in mind. The last thing I, 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 want to, I want to make sure is that conducting this election in the, such a hasty manner which sacrifice, may sacrifice accessibility, may sacrifice tenants' rights to find a safe place to vote, may sacrifice language translation, may sacrifice the advanced voting provisions. So we need to make sure we are able to conduct this election in a fair method so that we don't have to sacrifice any of those things uh, to hold a fair and inclusive elections that City of Toronto is very proud to have had in the past many years. So, Thank you very much for those comments. And I, since I, my clock there is not working, so I'm not able to see this. I, I have a, the last. All right, Councillor Shen, you, you yeah. have uh, over a, a minute left. Okay. So I, I, I actually would like to see this discussion happen in a democratically possible way with, with community. Men. I knocked on the doors last two days. And you know there's debate about some people want 25, some people want 47, some people want less, some people want more. That is fine. But most people agree changing the election halfway through when it's happening is an unfair process regardless of where your political spectrum is, regardless of what you think about uh, a particular policy. And it's important for us to keep that in mind as we discuss this because it's not unfair for just the councillors who are running for re-election, but also the candidates, their teams, and the public who have a right to have a fair and uh, equitable representation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Shan. I see no questions of you. Next on our speakers list is Councillor Peruzza, followed by Councillor Nunziata, and then Perks. Councillor Peruzza, you have the floor. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Speaker. 
the population of uh, the city of Kingston, Ontario, is 123,000 people. Right. Let, me, let me say that one more time. The population of the city of Kingston is 123,000 people. They have 12 councillors and a mayor. Yeah. Are they being reduced in half? Should be. No. Or consistent with the provincial seats or federal seats? No. Neither is Hamilton, Ottawa, whatever, all the other cities, uh, Windsor and so on. Now, should a city councillor in the city of Toronto be able to represent 125, 150, 200,000 people, in my case with a university, a big employment district? I don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. But I can tell you this, and why this particular act action and activity is distasteful to me. To think that this, a city the size of that Toronto We make, I don't know, decisions on tens of billions of dollars annually on development decisions. Operating budget, 13, 14, 15 billion dollars. Capital budget on top of that. that. Those decisions are going to be left in the hands of 13 people. 13 people are going to run this city. That's going to be the new majority. Digest that for a second. 13 people. Last week, during the council meeting, we caught and stopped on a tie vote 2020, a $361 million giveaway to six of the biggest corporations in the city. $361 million. That would pay for a council here, every politician, for the next 20 years. You get it for free. You made a decision last week to save that money. You get that council, you get all the politicians for the next 20 years for free. Would that decision have gone the other way if you had had 13 people here? Ask yourselves, would that decision have gone the other way if you only had 13 people here? I can answer that for you. Most of you can answer that for yourselves in your own heads. Yes, it would have. Yeah, would have given it away. That's what we're talking about. I see the eagerness on some of my colleagues, you know, sort of wanting to put on their running shoes and run all the way down here. I'm going to be running this place and have all dysfunction gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Leave it to me. Leave it to Jimmy. He's going to, he's going to be okay. He's, no way he's going to like, oh, my gosh, yeah. He's going to do a great job on your behalf. He'll take care of you. He'll answer your phone. He'll come fix the curb. Take care of the barking dog. I'll tell you another thing that's really distasteful for me, and you should all wake up to it. When you had amalgamation, you didn't have the power. The cities didn't have the power to either amalgamate or not amalgamate. That was a provincial power. Mike F Harris, you may like or not like what he did, but it was his decision to make. That was a provincial decision. This is not. This is not. This is a decision which this council gets to make. That's why you get elected. That's why, uh, that's why Holiday gets paid the big bucks. To decide word boundaries. He doesn't get to decide, that, oh, I didn't like the decision, so me and my daddy are going to write a letter, change that, get the premier to exercise his absolute power and change that for us, because I didn't like it. Well, one day, he may get a premier that he may not like <laughs> up there. He may make the decisions that he may not like. I asked the premier. He is the premier of all of Ontario, each and every one of us. 
He earned a magnificent title in getting that job. In front of it, he gets honorable forever. He is the honorable Doug Ford. He gets that forever, the rest of his life. He doesn't get it while he's just the premier of the province of Ontario. And the people of the province of Ontario expect them to, hand, to deal with all of us with a fair and equal hand. Thank you, and Councilor he's not doing that. Councillor Perutza, thank you very much. Your time is up. Thank you. I'm just speaking factually, not philosophically. Next on our speaker's list is Councillor Nunziata, followed by uh, Councillor Perks. Councillor Nunziata, you have the floor. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so it's no secret I support reducing the council to 25, and I've always supported. I've been very consistent over the years. When we amalgamated, and uh, when Mal Lastman was mayor, uh, we had 57 councillors. And uh, the, the, we moved a motion at that time to reduce council to 44, which we did. And then when David Miller was mayor, there was a similar motion moved to cut it to 22, which I supported. And then when um, Mayor Ford, there was also a motion to cut it, which I supported. And two years ago, when we, uh, when we um, expanded the boundaries, there was also a motion which I supported to cut. So there's no secret I support it, absolutely. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to hide the fact. I was there at the press conference on Friday, yes, absolutely. What I don't support, and I haven't supported, and I made that very clear as well to my constituents and to the media, is on the timing and the process. I do not support that. I expected it to happen one day. Um, I, was, I, I was shocked when it happened. It came a complete surprise to me. Um, I, I would have thought, because um, I know that that was the intent, it has been the intent for the last 20 years, which I do support, but I thought there would be a process. I thought it would be in effect maybe in the next municipal election or if anything, maybe the municipal election delayed to give an opportunity uh, for the candidates and for city staff to prepare themselves, but that's not the case. So I do not support the process, but I support the intent. And I'm not keeping that a secret. I've told my constituents that, and my constituents support the fact. They don't, what they're opposed to is the process. Um, as it was mentioned by Councillor Campbell, all oh, there's a number of committees we have to sit on. What it means is that some councillors have to work harder. Um, you know, that's what it means. We have to work harder, and you know, well, maybe it's not fair, Councillor Perks, but I'm hearing all these innuendos against each other. But when I say something, it's not fair. That's my opinion. There are some councillors as well, I mean, since we amalgamated. And, and by the way, when we amalgamated, we did a referendum as well. The former municipalities, we did a referendum and it didn't mean absolutely nothing because the premier ignored it, even though it was overwhelming support against Mega City, uh, the province passed it. But we did consult though. We did have the opportunity to hear from our constituents and that did happen. Uh, we were given the opportunity to put, the, um, to put it on the uh, ballot. And, um, and you know, there, there's 44 of us here and there'll be 47, uh, which uh, by the way, I did not support the 47. That's very clear as well. On record, I'm not trying to hide anything. Um, there are some councillors that spend more than others. They spend over their budget. Some councillors have constituency offices, some councillors don't. So each councillor represents their community in a different way. Um, and so we're all very different in many, many ways. But by reducing to 25, um, I don't think that's going to change. I think the members of council that are doing a lot of community work and working with their constituents, that would, that would still remain in, in place. And I don't think that's, the representation to the constituents would not change. Over the years, I've heard from when you speak to constituents, why can't I have this, why can't I have that? Well, we don't have the money. 
Well, then cut the, uh, cut the politicians then. You have too many politicians. You hear that over and over again, and you've heard that over and over again. But I do not, I am not happy with the process and I'm not happy with the Premier, how he just, the 11th hour brought it forward, uh, not giving the opportunity uh, for, uh, for consultation, not giving the opportunity for the candidates, not giving opportunity for the city to prepare themselves for the municipal election. I am not happy with that at all. Um, so those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Nunziata, next on our speaker's list is Councillor Perks, followed by Councillor Karajianis. Councillor Perks, you have the floor. Thank you, Speaker. Why? Why would they do this? Why would they pick a fight with the second biggest government? Why would they use up their very first few weeks in their legislature doing this what they didn't even run on? What's going on? What's this about? Is it about money? No. It's not about money. We'll spend more money than they save just having two elections set up in the period of a year. The cost to the clerk of having to set up a second election will eat up all the savings. It's not about money. Is it about us disagreeing with each other? Well, let's hope that they think we should disagree with each other because governments where everybody agrees are called autocracies. One rule. We're here to disagree with each other. That's what we're for. So why? I'll tell you why. On the same day, the Premier announced that he was cutting mental health supports. We've had two mass killings in the city of Toronto in the last few months, and he's cutting mental health supports. The Premier has already cut funding to TCHC capital repairs. The Premier has already gutted our climate plan, something we worked on as a council for a whole term with thousands of Torontonians. The Premier has told us he's coming for the TTC. He's told us he's coming for the life-saving safe injection sites our public health system runs. He's coming for the things that make Toronto livable. And he wants us distracted, he wants us back on our heels, he wants us fighting with each other, he wants us to not notice that he wants to gut the things that make Toronto great. That's why. This has nothing to do with us. This has everything to do with our job representing the people in this chamber and the people in this city. Now, I've heard it said by some in this council chamber, done deal. They have, the, they have the law on their side, they get to do it. Well, if you're saying that, you've forgotten the most important principle of government. Governments govern with the consent of the people. No piece of paper, no legislative act, no decision by Doug Ford tells the people of Toronto they have to be governed by his rules. We only get to be here because the people of Toronto consent to having a city council. We're not a creature of the province. We're the voice of Torontonians. And our job is not to toddle up to Queen's Park and ask them, that, please, sir, can I have a referendum? I don't want their permission for anything. My permission doesn't come from them. My permission comes from Torontonians. My duty now, your duty now, our duty now, is to speak up for Torontonians, to call town hall meetings, to go to protests, to join legal actions, to fight back so that they learn on this fight that they will not be able to roll us over when they come for the transit system, that they will not be able to flatten us when they take away childcare, that we will be here to protect the people on social assistance and who live in community housing, that we will not let them roll back all the province, all the effort we have put into actually doing something on climate change. Your call is not to figure out whether or not you can find a nice c agreement with Doug Ford to make this a little less painful for us. Your duty is to get on the streets, fight back, and stop this assault on the city of Toronto.
Uh, thank you, Councillor Perks. And I would remind uh, members in the gallery and public in the gallery that to be fair to all councillors, we ask that you not do the cat calls or the applause, although it may be counterintuitive to applause Councillor uh, Perks and not to count, uh, applause uh, Councillor Davis um, is not appropriate. So please treat everybody fairly. You know what to do if you su support somebody. And I would ask you to be respectful of all councillors as we go through this democratic process. Thank you. Next on the uh, speakers list is Councillor Karagiannis. Councillor Karagiannis, you have the floor. Thank you. Yep, my apologies. Just a second. Thank ahead, you, Deputy Speaker. Um, you know, I, I applaud some, some of the theatrics that are around us, and I applaud the passion that people have. However, let's be real. I have a motion that I would like to put up, please. And the motion is an amendment to Councillor Holliday's that says that in the future to continue to mirror the number of federal and provincial ridings in Toronto. Theatrics will probably get you nowhere. Standing up and beating your chest again will send you nowhere. The Premier was elected, duly elected by the people of Ontario. The results might not have been what you wished or what you liked for. Councillor Peruzza, can you please take a, keep it down? Councillor Peruzza. Decision was made by the people of Ontario. The Premier has, uh, we are a creature of the, of the province. Other municipalities are the creature of the province. And the Premier and his uh, caucus and the, uh, uh, the uh, Queen's Park will decide where we go. That debate is to be handled there. However, I do have a lot of uh, colleagues that get up and say, we are so many people and we're going to get downsized. hundred, you know, they talk about the city of Kingston, Councilor Peru to talk about the city of Kingston and how many, um, how many councillors it have. So let me give you another, just let me give you another example, Councilor. You want to talk about PI? PI has about 115,000 people. It has four members of parliament, two senators, and something like 30 plus provincial legislatures, as well as a, a, so many councillors. And you know what? That is their constitution. That's why they came into confederation. Ontario went into confederation knowing full well that it will control the cities. So we are at the mercy Councilor of- Councilor Fletcher, please keep it down. Come on, you have to respect other members. We have to be respectful of the decision they make at Queen's Park. Whether you like it or dislike it, we can stand here and do all the theatrics and we can stand here and ask uh, people in the crowd, you got to ride, ride in the streets and go da 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 da. I've seen that before. We did it when the GST came in, and it, was, and it got nowhere. This is a democratic country. You don't like the results of the provincial election? Well, guess what, Mr. Perks? You can run to be the next premier. You voted for the GST. Peruzza. How many times, Speaker? Okay, uh, Councillor Peruzza, if that, cont if that continues, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I'm going to ask you, you to leave. No, Can you're disrupting. This Thank is. Uh, Cal no, Councillor Peruzza, this is like 10 times now I've said this today. And you don't have any more special privileges than anybody else in here. No, no, there's no point of order. Yeah. Yeah. If the. It's okay, surprising, Councillor thank you, Madam continue. Speaker. It's surprisingly that the northwest part of the city of Toronto is uh, is always uh, there with dramatics and, and, and vigor. So, I would say to you that we can take it to court, we can do all the challenges, but at the end of the day, we're going to end up spending money that's going to go to waste. This is valuable money that we need, and I'm sure that our, our clerk will probably give you the same advice. And the sooner that we move on. When this decision comes down on, the, on next week or this week, whatever it is, the better it's going to be. They're just going to pit councillors against councillors. And now for, I know for a fact, I'm in a life fight of my life. I'm going to have to fight my, my good friend next door to me. We've been colleagues for years. So either I'm going to retire him or he's going to retire me. Either or. But at the end of the day, keep it civil with each other. At the end of the day, this is what we're dealt with. Move on. Have your energy for the campaign. And standing up and presenting theatrics will get you nowhere. So, you know what? Let's move on and let the people speak. Thank you.
Thank you. <laughs> there was a motion on there, Madam Speaker. I don't know if anybody wants clarification of the motion. Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, so, Councillor Shang, clarification of the motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I have a question. Um, you were, I assume you, I think you were a federal member when the boundary changes happened. Think? Federally, I think you were. Uh, think, still, you, yeah. you should know, I was there I, 26 years. Yeah, you oh, says. So when the boundary change has happened federally, you as an MP was actively involved and you were engaged, right? I was engaged as the MP. We had the right to be engaged as the MP. So do we councillors? Were asked, we were asked to. Different level of government. Yeah. So when federal boundary changes, the MPs needed to be asked to and rightfully so. But when changes happen to city council boundaries, you think councillors should not be engaged in, in that the conversation? The federal system uh, has the constitution and the power to, to, to work. However, we are, Speaker, Madam please. Speaker, will you please oh, throw them out? Councillor Peruzza, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Yeah. Councillor Fletcher, this, Councillor Fletcher, he hasn't stopped for the past hour. Okay, so you will be quiet. On a point of order, uh, Madam Chair, I did not vote for the GST. The GST was during the Maluni years and I was in opposition. I, I just hope my good friend gets it right. Um, Councillor to Councillor Chan, um, the process federally allows the members of parliament to, um, to uh, intervene to have town hall meetings. The process here that we're being dealt with, we are a creature of the province. The province decides. Different levels of government, and under our constitution, we can sit here, scream and shout, but at the end of the day, we, if we take it to court, it's not going to have any so The councillors do not need to have a say in the boundaries, how it's assigned, how they're boundaries. We can, and we did, but unfortunately, that was thrown out the window by the province. Something above our pay grade. So the other question is, in my neighborhood, for example, Morningside Heights neighborhood gets cut into two. Malvern, which is a, a community that needs a lot more support, is being cut into two as a result of these changes. Provincially, federally, may be different, but as municipally, do you see that municipal work works around neighborhood, works around uh, geographical di di divisions? Would that be fair to just say that we completely align the federal boundaries all the time? Councillor, you have, as an individual, the right to put input into the when the lines or the redistribution has been done federally. I do remember a former colleague of ours, Rathika, that wanted to uh, uh, gerrymander in my ward. And I had town hall meetings and everything else, and I made sure that the boundaries of people of Scarborough Agent Court were represented by Scarborough Agent Court. So do members of federal parliament they have? Yes, they do. Well, at the end of the day, the commission uh, decided. So, I mean, you want to talk about gerrymandering? I just only want to point that out to you. Thank, thank you. I think you've clarified the motion. Thank you. Councillor Bailao. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, a lot of people have tried to make this discussion at 25 versus 47, but we all know that this is not what is in front of us. People talk about efficiencies, people talk about governance. I think one thing most of us actually could agree, that a governance review is in place. We could use a governance review. I would be totally open to work with our new premier on a governance review for Toronto. We can't govern a city of 2.8 million people the way that we governed it 100 years ago. Absolutely. But how come other things haven't been taken in consideration? How come, you know, maybe councillors at large haven't been taken in consideration? Term limits haven't been con taken in consideration. The talk about efficiencies, the fact that we have to run to the province to have door-to-door uh, -to -door sales approved haven't been taken in consideration. Is that efficiency? That no matter what we decide in here, if we want to uh, install red light cameras in our streets, we have to go and run for the province and actually ask for authorization? Let's talk about efficiencies, let's talk about governance, but let's have a depth conversation about it. The Premier put a pause and said that he would review the elections of chairs in the GTA. Why didn't the same thing happen to us? Why didn't we put a pause and have a conversation with the people of Toronto and with the stakeholders about how to govern better this city and work in a collaborative way? The issue in here is timing and process, Madam Speaker. It is timing. Thousands of people come to this city because we are a democratic society. We are in the middle of an election. Like it or not, there might not be signs out there in the lawns, but May 1st, an election started. We needed to respect that. 
We needed to understand that there's a process going on. We needed to understand that if we want to change, fine, you might even hit the pause button, but to stop it, to say all of a, sa a sudden we're going to change the rules in the middle of the game? Councillor Perusa talked about the $500 million that we approved in here, or we're about to approve in here, because we changed the rules in the middle of the game. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair for those business. Right. How fair is it for the people of Toronto, $2.8 million, that we change the rules to them in the middle of the game? We gave away $500 million. The same people that want to save $25 million wanted to give away $500 million because it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to change the rules in the middle of the game. And right now, we're saying, go ahead, change the rules in the middle of the game. And has anybody thought of what is to do business like this? I wonder what Amazon is thinking right now. I wonder what businesses are thinking. Is this the way that we're going to deal with the city in this province, that they change the rules in the middle of the game? This is the largest city in the country. This is the biggest economic engine of this province. What is the impact that is going to have on this economy? What message are we sending to people out there, to business out there, that we change the rules in the middle of the game? Who cares what's happening? It's not a pause. It's move ahead. That's what we're talking about efficiencies. Let's talk about efficiency. Imagine that you go to the bank, take, want to take out a mortgage. You have your pre-approval. The president of the bank changes and they change the rules on you. You can't close the deal. Any person that wants to buy a house, they can relate to that. Go tell them that their pre-approval mortgage is done. We change the rules, we change the president. Doesn't apply anymore. That's what we're talking about in here. That's why we're saying if you want to have a conversation about these issues, absolutely. Let's have it. It's needed. The city grew too much. We can, we can have better, better government, more effective government. There's so much that we can work with this province on in making sure that we have a more effective council. But let's do it right. Let's do it with the people of Toronto. Let's not challenge democracy. Let's enhance democracy in this city. Call. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I believe uh, clerks has my motion. If they could post it. Uh, the City Council requests that the Province of Ontario cuts the number of City Councillors to match the number of federal provincial ridings, that the same principle be extended to all municipalities across the province. Um, I'll, I'll just start by saying um, I think it's, it's been well stated that the process here, lack of process, stinks. I, I think we all know that. Um, I, I also think it's quite clear how, what is, you know, how cynical this move and this decision is. Um, but I, I also understand it's easy to generate talking points to defend it. Of course no one wants more politicians. Of course it's easy to say government's dysfunctional. Easy, easy talking points. But it doesn't, it doesn't discount or change the fact uh, that the process has been absent, non-existent, and this is a really mean-spirited and cynical move and it hasn't been well thought out. I, I just want to touch on one subject matter. For my eight years of elected office in this chamber, we have spent hours and hours specifically talking about the good people of Scarborough and how those 650,000 voters don't get their say. They're not heard. They're not fairly represented. They don't get what the others there do, what others have. So we're in front of us here being asked to endorse a system that will see those 650,000 Scarborough voters who we've spent eight years and probably are going to spend billions of dollars to make sure that they don't feel excluded, don't feel underrepresented, are going to have six councillors. The city of Markham, just to the north, is going to have double that, 12 councillors, and their population is half the size of Scarborough. And so for me to spend the better part of my entire political career to be told and lectured and actually support those people and all the decisions I've made and to say that they deserve fair representation. They've been left out. Give them fair representation. Yet most Scarborough councillors and many others in this chamber are going to say, you know what? We want to cut your representation to half of what Markham gets. Actually, even less because your population is double. And so to me, some of the logic I'm hearing today does not ring true with what I've been told is the case or should be the case for the last eight years. And so I think if we're going to talk about fairness, that fairness should extend well beyond the boundaries of Toronto. It should extend across the province. 
And that's why I hope you'll support my motion to make sure that every other municipality in the city is uh, governed the same way that the City of Toronto potentially would be. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question by Councillor Lane, clarification. Yes, thank you very much, and through you, Madam Speaker. Um, I think I appreciate the, the purpose of the motion, but I just wanted to clarify one thing. In, in making this statement that all councils should be cut in half, are you trying to highlight that it, it was kind of arbitrary and unfair that the Premier did it to just one city, rather than actually thinking that the Premier should use this approach in all circumstances? It, 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 I think we all recognize that it was uh, strange, and, and maybe that's why I said mean-spirited mean and cynical, how Toronto was exclusively targeted for this type of efficiency and fairness that might be brought through a reduction in council. And so, yeah, I think you're, you're uh, pretty bang on and Sorry, I'm trying to see you there yeah. uh, on uh, what the intentions and, and statement behind this motion is. Thank you. Councillor Fletcher, clarification so of the motion. Are, are you suggesting then that Markham, you've, you gave some numbers earlier, I'm just wondering what they were again. So Markham, just to the north of Scarborough, they share a boundary has 12 councillors for their 350,000 people. Uh, Scarborough, the great s former city of Scarborough, has six councillors for 650,000 people. So I would assume that Markham would probably, and under that motion that you have, maybe have two or three at the Yeah, moment. two or three, I think, plus a mayor. Plus the mayor, because that, uh, that would be plus the mayor. In yeah, all you, a mayor on top of that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, in fairness, like Waterloo might have one councillor and, um, and a mayor, <laughs> but yeah. So some of those cities, what about those cities um, that have councils, but that there's ridings where there's more than one city? What would happen there under this motion? Uh, I, I, I would hope that some greater thought would be given to policy so we could figure that out. So north, you have Sault Ste. Marie, Wawa, the kind of all in the same riding. Yeah, that'd be a lot of, that, 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 that councillor would have a big job. So they might each have a mayor and then one councillor. Or maybe just a mayor. Or maybe just a mayor. Thank you. <laughs> councillor Ford, clarification. Yes, thank you very much. I, I just, um, just an interesting perspective came up, uh, which raised a question on the motion from one of my other colleagues about looking across the province um, equally. Um, does any other city have um, its own act and unique legislation, like the City of Ottawa Act or no, City just, of Waterloo just, Act? There's the, there's the City of Toronto Act, and then there's a, uh, uh, every other municipality is governed by the Municipal Act. Right, thank you. Okay. You have to amend the municipal act. Okay, please. Um, Councillor, <coughs> Councillor McMahon. <coughs> thank you very much, <coughs> Madam Speaker. <coughs> so this is wrong. It's just plain wrong. And why is it wrong? The Premier wants to save money, apparently. Is apparently. this, this going to save money? We are already in the middle of an election. We have spent a fortune on a two-year ward boundary review. Then we spent money uh, at the OMB with the same review. We are doing renovations in this city hall, in our on the second floor, we are already renovating for three new offices, bathrooms, etc. Everything has been changed and changing for the construction. The complicated, convoluted, nightmare, logistic, spider web mess of unraveling the current election and starting the next election is colossal. We heard that from fantastic Yuli Watkiss the other day. How is that ever going to happen? Where are the resources? Who's paying for that? This is not a savings of money. 
That's wrong. Is this about customer service, which the premier and his late brother prided themselves in relentlessly, endlessly on customer service? How is this chopping council in half to 25 councillors, how is that delivering on that customer service? How are you picking up the phone and answering those calls for now double, triple the number of residents? And we, I've heard more than once from some councillors in this chamber, you just need to work harder. Work harder? I am never home. I got my kids a dog in 2010. That dog doesn't even know who I am. It's friendlier with the postman. I work 12 to 15 hour days. I am borderline heart attack. Most days, I have BIAs, Councillor Holiday. I have six BIAs. I have 40 community groups. I have residents associations. I represent the beach. They are very engaged and active. We have an um, immense amount of events in the ward. Every music festival in Woodbine Park every weekend, huge, 40,000 people coming down. I host my own events movie nights, markets, you name it, I am out there ricocheting around the ward on my bike, on transit, hitchhiking, anywhere I can get to those events. I have condo applications, I have an arena board that's undergoing a huge um, revitalization of a second pad, I have uh, AOX, two AOX, I get 150 emails a day. My phone doesn't stop ringing. It is not sleepy Etobicoke with six emails a day and no, no groups. Okay, point, point of order, Councillor McMahon. Tell us how busy you are. Councillor Holliday and then Councillor DiCiano. Councillor Holliday. I understand the passion of the debate in here and there's differing viewpoints, but I would ask members of council not to insult the people of Etobicoke and that the member withdraw that remark. Thank you, Councillor DiCiano. Speaker, I echo those comments. Etobicoke Lakeshore is now the largest constituency in the country uh, with, with tremendous amount of development, investment everywhere, one of the largest industrial pockets in the entire city. Uh, it's just, and, and I have great respect for Triple M, believe me when I say that, uh, but I would ask that that comment be retracted. I, I will retract sleepy. Sleepy, that's the adjective I use. I mean, it's a peaceful area. Um, that's what I mean. Because I do, have, I do have friends in Etobicoke. Some of them don't know who their counselor is, unfortunately, because they don't get a newsletter. A newsletter, no social media, no Twitter. That, so for those counselors who say, just work harder, that is an impossible uh, request. I really want to do a Freaky Friday uh, week or day where you switch me roles. You come to the beach. You represent the beach. I will happily uh, go to a peaceful um, area with, with not the workload that I have in my area. The last thing I will say is that this is, uh, this is wrong because we are in the middle of an election. It is beyond unfair. You have tons of candidates out there who have been planning for this for years. Maybe they've taken a Toastmaster course four years ago gearing up. Maybe they've reconfigured their childcare or their own career. They're taking leaves of absence from their jobs. They've quit their jobs. They're working on nothing right now, campaigning for the greater good for their passion for this city. They've been waiting till maybe I vacate my seat, maybe they're waiting to challenge you. Who knows, but they are here and they're doing it for the right reasons. They have raised money. Thank they you. They have bought t-shirts. Thank you, Councillor McMahon. This is completely unfair. Thank you. Councillor Campbell to speak. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I, uh, don't have a lot to say beyond what I said earlier about all of these, uh, all of these boards and commissions. And you know, if we we're going to have 19 fewer councillors down here, 
And it's almost like all of these these boards and commission don't matter so much. You know, we spent we spent the better part of a day or three quarter or, or half a day talking about the implications of the, the financial performance and the compensation at, at Toronto Hydro. And we had we had a couple of councillors who were on that board who perform uh, great work there, and there are three of them. So going forward, whether is there going to be two? Is there going to be one? I mean, this is this is not uh, so different from what Councillor Cole was saying about municipalities having just one. Uh, you know, having one uh, one councillor because there's only one federal or provincial riding. You know, all of these to say that all of these boards and commissions uh, aren't important. It kind of it, I think it diminishes the importance of these of these uh, these bodies and what they do, and it diminishes our role. Um, it's already difficult getting quorum with 44 councillors. I wasn't in favor of going to 47. I'm sure not in favor of going to 25. Uh, uh, and I, I do have a feeling that those that are, have written to me and have uh, written to your offices that have said that they are in favor of it don't really know what's involved in being a counselor. Now, I, I probably don't work as hard as uh, Councillor McMahon. I don't have, uh, I mean, it sounds like she's working 15 hours a day. I don't know if I'm working 15 hours a day, but this is, when this job is done fully and properly and you read your reports, I mean, a lot of counselors don't bother to read reports. When you read your reports and you show up at meetings, then it's a full-time job. And I was, I was actually, I was blown away by the number of development applications and work that, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Councilor Cressy and Long, Long Tam are undertaking and, and in their wards. And every one of us has a different, has a different mix of workload. And I like getting back to my constituents. I like responding to emails to them. I like connecting with them through e-newsletters and newsletters and, and talking to them on the phone. And I know that I'm much busier doing that than my local MP. And we are, we are the grassroots of the city. We are, we are what people come to. You know, I've been out knocking on doors, and, you know, I would say every fourth or fifth door, somebody's got something to say. You know, they want to talk about what's going on in their community. And I'm really learning. I mean, I've heard it down here before. Now I really know it. All politics is local. So one of the things I like about, about running for elections in the current setup is you can, over the course of three months, you can go to almost every street in the ward and you can talk to people. And I remember every doorstep. I remember, I remember cried out loud, I remember Croatian mailboxes, you know, that I've seen before. <laughs> I, remember, I remember patios and walkways and I remember people. And I think, I remember this conversation four years ago. Well, now, that's almost impossible. What, are you going to start campaigning a year before the election? I mean, how are you going to, how are you going to have that connection with people? Now, some people may say, well, there's a savings of money. Well, you know what? Reality is, listen, I think the job we do is fairly important. You know, I'm on the budget committee, and we oversee the budget. This is a complex organization. This isn't just about, you know, showing up and getting newsletter member motions. This is a complex organization where we have to hold the staff to account for the actions that they want to take. And you know I'm a fiscal conservative, I also, but I also believe we have to build a city. And building a city requires oversight. If we take, you know, God love the civil service, but you know what? If we take away the oversight, the civil service might as well just run the show. So uh, I know that uh, Premier Ford wants to save money, but in the end, this might wind up costing money. You know, you're going to have you're going to have bloated budgets. You know, you know, God love a mayor that can that can uh, rein in the civil service when he doesn't have the troops around him to do so. So this could wind up costing money in the end, and the $25 million, I mean, that's a joke. What, what is our budget, $11 billion, $14 billion when you roll everything in? I mean, that's a, that's a rounding error on somebody's, on some books. So uh, the savings are, are not going to amount to a hill of beans. In fact, they, they might even, it might even wind up costing more in the end because of the lack of proper oversight. So I think I'm pretty clear about, about where I stand. I feel sorry, really, for the citizens of Toronto because, you know, that personal interaction that they've had with us, it's going to be gone. There's no question it's going to be gone. You know, some guy just said to me, uh, I'm answering an email, he said, oh, you know what, I think this is really great. And I said back to him, I said, well, you know what, you might not think it's so great when you don't get a prompt reply or you don't get a reply at all. And that's, that's probably what's going to happen because I'll tell you what, the 25 remaining counselors, you're going to be in meeting after meeting after meeting. If we keep the same makeup, either that or you're going to have committees with four people on them. And then good luck getting quorum or even going to the bathroom for crying out loud, you know. So, so I don't know where proper oversight is going to come with 25 people in an organization this complex. That's what I've learned down Thank here. Thank you, Councillor Campbell. Councillor Thompson. You are going to speak. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. 
Uh, speaker, history is a great teacher. And I look back to where we were with respect to amalgamation. I see the number of people that are outraged and uh, appreciate their outrage. But uh, during amalgamation, there were many, many more because uh, all of our respective communities and cities and so on were being impacted. And so decisions was that uh, they would not be represented well and everything would be chaos and so on. And we learned that um, it wasn't all chaos. I agree with some who have risen in the, in the chamber today to say, listen, I wish that we had more time, more clarity uh, in terms of this particular exercise. And whether or not you agree with the Premier with respect to 25 or not, it seems to me the legislative authority belongs to the Premier to make these particular decisions. Those authorities he didn't actually come up with overnight. They are cast in legislation. They're cast in law. and so. He has the ability to do this. I, I, I agree that uh, uh, you know we, we would have loved to have had more time, but we don't. And so what do we do? When I compare this to amalgamation, it was a process then where people were complaining, and I remember the late Frank Fulbert, uh, who was adamant that uh, this should never happen and so on, and that uh, Scarborough and other places in the city would not be uh, well, uh, well served. I do think Scarborough, Scarborough is well served, uh, contrary to some of the comments here, by the members of council who are part of the Scarborough Council. Uh, speaker, I, I know that um, it has been stated and I have been very clear with respect to my position. I'm in agreement with respect to what it actually is on the table, what the Premier has done. I've often felt that council was too large and council needed to be reduced. I didn't land on 25, but this is where we are today, and I'm going to agree on 25, because I don't actually get to vote on it. I just get to act because that's the premier and the legislature's uh, responsibility to make that particular decision. It's not my decision. My decision is to respond and do what I can. I did spend the weekend talking to many of my constituents, both at the town hall that I attended as well as just being out in the community. Many of them said to me they would have preferred that they had more notice and more time. They got that. But they didn't objectively say we don't want to see a reduction with respect to the size of council. <coughs> I do think that there's a requirement that we're going to have, whoever is here, is going to have to have more staff, more constituency office, and uh, more utilization of, of, of those types of, um, of services. But when I look at one of the exercises that we've been going through for some time, which is police modernization. We can talk about modernization of the police, which I've been very supportive of, but we can't talk about modernization of council. I don't get that. I do think that we can do both. And I know for those who say that you will not be well served, there's no doubt you're going to have to work harder. And there's no doubt that you're going to have more staff to help you in order to make that uh, efforts and to ensure that we're able to serve the interests of people. When I look at the, uh, the document that Councillor Fletcher has submitted, and thank you Councillor Fletcher for this, this is very helpful, there are a number of different models in terms of the size of councils and how they work and the different structures. I actually don't see a problem that the City of Toronto's new structure won't actually and, and can't be on this particular list here and won't work in the best interest of the people. I don't know whether or not I will run against my good colleague, Councillor Glenn de Bearmaker, but I will always know, because we've been friends since we were young boys, we will always be friends no matter what. It is not my position with respect to whether or not I become a councillor or not. It is the people's decision. And so the opportunity will be afforded us if we choose to run and we run against each other, that one of us will win and one of us will lose but the rain and sun will shine the next day, quite frankly, and I'll be happy about that. And so I will, if I'm successful, be able to come back and work harder. If Councillor DeBemerker is such, I would support him because he would then be my councillor, quite frankly. I don't know if this is my last speech here, uh, Speaker, but what I simply want to say is this. The Premier and Council and, and the Legislature is making a decision, and there's nothing that I can see that would actually cause us to change that in spite of our views and the people that are here today, the fact of the matter is that this is going to proceed very similar to what happened with respect to amalgamation. Thank you. Thank you.
Right on time. Councillor DiCiano. Madam Speaker, I have a motion, uh, if you could put that up on the screen, uh, to amend motion four by Councillor Fletcher, so it now reads as follows. Uh, that City Council direct the City Solicitor to consider the validity and the constitutionality of any provincial legislation, including its potential violation of the rights of the citizens of Toronto, to fair and effective representation, as well as a review of the constitutional process required and the impacts of the City of Toronto seceding from the province of Ontario and to report back to City Council a special meeting to be called by the Mayor uh, before Labor Day with options for City Council's consideration. Madam Speaker, the reason I bring this motion forward is that uh, over the last uh, few days, uh, the former chief planner of the city uh, registered to run for mayor and um, over the weekend has since doubled down on her campaign pledge uh, that the city secede. So I think when we return for an emergency meeting, um, the solicitor uh, should get back to us with respect to the validity and constitutionality of this idea and what the ramifications are. Uh, quite frankly, uh, it's, it's confusing to me. I think members of council need to know. I think members of the public need to know. Uh, myself, I would much rather hear about transit and gun violence and infrastructure and housing during the next three uh, months. Um, but this is going to be an issue. This is going to be a, a debate. So how does it work? Um, how many politicians uh, should a new province of three million people have? Uh, that's going to be a question. Um, will the province let us keep the five billion dollars they've promised us for transit? Um, or the 180 million dollars they promised us for smart track? Uh, do we have to give the money back? Um, or is it shovels down? Um, you know, setting up ministries. How long is it going to take to set up a ministry of health? Um, do we now appoint a trade representative uh, uh, for NAFTA negotiations? Um, you know, taxes. Think about that. How much is our taxes going to go up if we have to do all the work that the province is doing for us? Are taxes going to go up 100%, 200%, uh, 300%? Um, you know, agriculture, food security. I mean, I know we approve backyard chickens. Uh, but I doubt that a few eggs from my backyard in Councillor Mahevics is going to feed, uh, feed the city. So these are, these are really important questions that I'm hoping um, through this motion, uh, when we come back for an emergency council session, um, we'll have the, uh, the city solicitor be able to answer for us. I mean, you know, there's been talk about strong mayor systems, but I guess some people are just looking for uh, strong sovereign power systems. Um, so uh, that's my motion and I'm hoping everyone has the same uh, thoughts that they'll support this motion as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor... Yes, okay. Councillor Perks is... Yes, I'm, I was going to rule on it, but Councillor Perks... Councillor Perks. Thank you, uh, Speaker. The amendment. No, but Councillor Perks me, was before Councillor Fillion. Sorry. The Councilor amendment Fillion. looks to me like a distinct pro proposition and is not actually an amendment to the substance of what Councillor, uh, what the Councillor is trying to amend. So I ask you rule it out of order. And that's what I was going to do. I'm ruling it out of order. It's not before us. Okay. Do, do you want to challenge me? There's no debate. So, Councillor DiCiano's, chal Councillor DiCiano's challenging me. Yes. Councillor Burnside, please. Thank you. Councillor Kelly, please. Councillor Perks, please. Councillor Kelly, your vote, please.
Councillor Algemeri, please. Madam Speaker, the chair is upheld. The vote is 35 to 7. Yes, yes, you are. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker. But I can't remember how much time you had on because I cleared four your time. I, I think you. Madam Speaker, I think I had like four and a half minutes left. <laughs> I think you. I think you had about two minutes. Okay. Okay. Go thank ahead. you, Madam Speaker. Go ahead. So, Madam Speaker, with respect to what we're actually uh, debating here today, um, I just want to. I just want to remind everybody here. Uh, for some reason, we're talking about. There's, there's been a lot of, of, of fear-mongering over the last uh, day and a half on this issue. Uh, the language, you know, that Councillor Cressy used on Friday that the people will suffer. That's language of fear, Madam Speaker. I, I don't see a difference between that and what's going on in the United States. Um, let's, let's be reminded that this process was initiated for one primary reason to bring voter parity to voters in the city of Toronto. It is a, a right to fairer elections that this process was undertaken. It did not happen that way despite what the OMB said. Remember, that is a body that's being reformed for a reason, okay? At the end of the day, we now have wards that have a 50,000 person difference going into the next election. That's not voter parity, and it's not fair for the citizens of Toronto. What the, what the Premier has done will bring nearly one million residents of Toronto back into voter parity where their vote will be weighted the same as everybody else. That was the most important aspect of this whole process. Moving forward, if we continue to adopt the federal and provincial riding boundaries, we'll never have to go through this expensive, time-consuming process again because the wards and the boundaries will change every 10 years forever. It's a system that will be independent and will certainly work better for residents of the City of Toronto. So again, we're voting on all kinds of motions here today, none of them that have any effect on what's going to happen over the next couple of days. I think we should all get ready for- Councillor DiCiano, your time is up. Thank you. You said I had two minutes and now you, I need no, a minute isn't. more. No, You're over two minutes. You said I, okay, thanks, Madam Speaker. No, I said you had two minutes. Okay, thank you. And you're over. Councillor Peruzza, why are you hugging everyone? Oh, no, no. I'm going to give you a hug too. Stand up. Come on. Why are you hugging everyone? Stand up. Why are you hugging everybody? Because I've got to go. i got to go in there and show you. Oh, he has to leave. That's why he's hugging us. <laughs> okay. Um, Councillor Robinson to speak. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And for my final speech at this, uh, for this council term, I'm going to be very succinct and brief. And I am going to move a motion, if the clerks could put it up on the screen. So uh, this motion is to uh, express support for reducing the size of council but subject to the province conducting a binding referendum. So I am on record, uh, clearly on record, uh, favoring uh, less politicians and reducing the size of council. So I'm not about to stray from that at this moment. But uh, what I don't agree with is the way this has happened. And we've heard that loud and clear uh, today and on Friday. And really this motion is a variation on the theme of the mayor's motion that he put forward uh, at the very beginning of this uh, session, as well as Councillor Holliday's motion. So um, this is, uh, uh, timing is unfortunate. It's, it's far from ideal. I think it's been very jarring for many people. Uh, it came out of nowhere. We were blindsided. Nobody had a sense that this was uh, coming. I think all the arguments have been made uh, over the last two days, Friday and today. And so on that note, I will sit down and hope that you'll uh, support this motion that provides public mm -hmm. consultation as part of this process. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, that's, oh, Councillor DiGiorgio, you have questions to Councillor Robinson. Clarification of the motion. Yeah, thank you, Madam Speaker. Just uh, 
while I appreciate in principle what you're trying to accomplish, Councillor Robinson, um, so this binding arbitration process that we will undergo, or at least the city will undergo, how long do you anticipate a, a binding referendum? How long do you anticipate it'll take? Could it take up to three years before a final decision is made? Three years? Or however, like it won't happen before the next election, will it? Why not? How can it possibly happen before the next election? We were having trouble putting up a ballot system to Wait, sorry, have an election. You, just to be clear, when you say next election, you mean when? October, this October. This, ele this election. Right. This, that we're already midpoint through. This yeah, election. but appa apparently we've missed the deadline to put a question or a, a I referendum question. That. I yeah. understand that. That's why the mayor's uh, phrased his motion accordingly. All right, so you anticipate that we will put the referendum question on the ballot of this uh, October election? No, that's not, I'm not, uh, I'm not an administrator of this election, so that's really for the staff to determine based on the outcome th of this motion. But um, there's all sorts of options before us. There's also the option of delaying the election by a, a period of time to accommodate this. So I'm not about to... Um, you know, weigh in on that, those specific technical pieces, but there, I think there's many options before us. Okay, but I just want to clarify what, that I understood from staff that they're having tremendous problems trying to come up with an implementation plan that allows them to put together a ballot of candidates running in time for the October 22nd deadline. So what I'm, but uh, I, I understand your response and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe that the councillor has Yep. Answered your question. Same thing. Yeah, we should probably do this. Councillor Wong Tam, clarification of the motion. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, just to follow up on my colleagues' uh, questions, um, the Municipal Elections Act uh, has a specific piece that speaks to uh, referendums and how questions uh, have to be framed uh, in the form th through the enactment of a bylaw before it gets onto the ballot. Um, are you aware of that? No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Mike's cut off. I don't know the ins and outs of this. What I do know is that I've put forward, I've placed a motion because I'm on record saying I believe in a reduced council size, but I don't like the, like the way this is unfolded. And so I would like to ensure that there is public consultation, which you and I and many of us in this room are, are in, uh, support of. We all believe in civic engagement and we want to see the, hear the voice of the people through this process. So while I support it, I just don't think the timing uh, is a right, and I think this is a far from ideal scenario. Thank you very much, Councillor. That's very helpful. Um, and so, considering that uh, a question has not been can properly framed, uh, we we don't have it enacted through a, through a bylaw. We we seem to have missed the time period that we can actually get a question out before the uh, the electorate. Um, we we have a we have a premier that's very clearly stated that the referendum uh, was. Well, apparently took place on June the 7th and that he had spoken to thousands of people in coffee shops and, and somehow these private conversations and perhaps even public conversations, he's arrived at his own referendum without any uh, public accountability or, 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 or measurement um, and he's not interested in having another okay, referendum. Okay, Councillor so Wong Tam, please. My, my question, No, but you're not getting to your question. Actually, Madam Speaker, no. I'm trying to set it okay. up because... No, please, my, please. If you allow me to finish, Madam Speaker, yeah. I will get to it. Yeah. My, my, question, hey. my question is, thank you very much, Councillor Maliti. My question is, considering that the Premier has, has said all of that and said that there is not going to be another referendum because, according to him, he has already held one, how do we reconcile what the Premier has said what the, what the mayor has put on the table and what you're now asking for based on what is confined in the election acts as it pertains to the referendum portion. I, I have no idea. Madam Speaker, I'm happy no idea. to answer any questions that clarify the motion, yeah. which I Th started off you. by doing very, Th I thought I was very, fairly yes, clear. You were clear, thank you. Councillor, Deputy Mayor Menem Wong. Thank you very much. Um, there's an inference in your motion that the, the, if there were to be a referendum, that the result would be that people would be in favor of it, correct? 
would be in favor of the reduction. So you um, well, I'm, I'm, my guess is that that would be the outcome, but I don't think that's in fear, I don't think that that inference is here, is it? I'm, so, where are you seeing so that? So if, 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 the, if the result of the referendum would be that people were against this, then we're supporting it and the people are against it. So the inference has to be, I just need a clarification, that the public would, the referendum would yield a result that the people would be support, supporting the reduction. Is that inference, inference what, what I'm saying here clearly is I support reduction in the size of council. I'm on public record. Having said that, I'm not comfortable with this process or the way it's unfolded, and so therefore I'm asking for a binding referendum as part of the process uh, so okay. that the people of Toronto have a voice. Thank you. Councillor Fletcher. I'm just reading from the legislation that amends the City of Toronto Act to provide that the current division of the city into wards no longer applies after City Council and then repeals parts of the Act. I'm sure you've had a chance to look at this Act and sets the nomination day for September 14th. So I would suggest that this referendum would have to be before September 14th and the nomination day. I see Councillor Hart nodding his head um, in, because you, would you agree you can't have an election on October 22nd, have a referendum that says uh, we don't like 25 wards and that somehow it's binding. This would be more chaos than we're currently facing. So um, I, again, as I mentioned earlier, I do think that given what's unfolded, uh, that there's opportunity to tweak some of the deadlines and dates related to this process. And so that doing that would then accommodate uh, this. Would you uh, would you look at as a friendly amendment if somebody moved that? Uh, no, that's fine. I just think that it's Absolutely. very Absolutely. difficult here since the legislation has now come down with the date as being September 14th and October 22nd. I'd absolutely uh, be happy to um, uh, have anyone put a friendly amendment related to that. Thank you. Councillor Davis, clarification of the motion. I'm trying to understand the difference um, of intent between your motion regarding a referendum and the mayor's. Motion 1A, which calls for a binding referendum yes. on the number and boundaries of wards before proceeding with the proposed legislation. What is yours? What is mine is, uh, if the clerks could put it up on the screen, um, Subject to it's, it's quite succinct and clear that we, uh, that I, I do support a reduction in council. I'm, I voted that way uh, last, last time we as a council voted on this. Um, and so, but given that, I do think there's a process that needs to unfold as part of this. And so I'm asking for that binding referendum to be part of this process. And so uh, I guess I'm, uh, I'm still not going to compare. Understand. Sorry? I'm still trying to understand the difference between your motion and the mayor's. So I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, maybe going to compare and contrast the mayor's motion versus mine, but I don't believe well, uh, that he has a number in his. I, am I correct in saying the mayor doesn't have a number in his motion? A number? Of councillors? No, he no. asked to conduct a binding referendum. It's 1A. Yes, yeah, so there's no, that, so if you want to understand the, the difference, I believe the difference would be uh, the 25 councillor and mayor uh, phrase, phrase in here, that section. Okay. So you're, just to you know, this is, I'm trying to understand. So the difference is you are con going to, pro you're proposing conducting a referendum on the specific number of 25. That, well, it clearly states the motion and that's that different City from the Council mayor's, express which is its support to the province to cut City Council to 25 councillors and a mayor, which I have consistently supported for probably over a decade, subject to the province conducting a binding referendum, meaning let's hear from the people of Toronto on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's it's, um, it's hard to explain it any other way. So, Councillor Thompson, clarification. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, through you and, and to the Councillor. I don't mean to belabor this point, but I just want to make sure I understand this. So, um, this binding um, referendum 
does the uh, result matter with respect to the support of the 25? Because the way I read this, it seems to suggest that we should have the uh, referendum and the results is immaterial. It doesn't express to me that the results either yay or nay is important. It's just the fact of the uh, referendum being taking place. So I'm happy for anyone to uh, amend this or put forward a friendly amendment if you want to express that. But um, really my understanding, e even from your speech, was that we don't have a lot of influence on right. this as a council. Well, that was my next question. So yeah. even with that, it wouldn't matter. Well, that's what you stated today in your remarks. Right, and that's so, my belief, yes. Yes, yeah, so absolutely, uh, that's what you've stated, and I've heard that elsewhere. Right. Uh, having said that, um, my, my issue, Councillor Thompson, is simply this. I do, I do fully support a reduction in the size right. of council. Right. have for since the dawn of time. Having said that, I do think it, it would be uh, really important as part of the process to include a referendum. To have the referendum. And hear right. fr from, the, from the people okay, of the city. That's very helpful. Thank, thank you. you, Speaker. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, I know. Councillor Mamlidi, clarification of the motion. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in knowing your perspective on, on, on moving this motion, uh, not only as a politician, but a, f a former successful bureaucrat in the City of Toronto. Would your, would your motion uh, mean as well that this might, if this happens uh, in reducing uh, to 25, that it can actually mean uh, a bit of a bit of relief for the bureaucrats. Well, uh, absolutely. That's my that's the first part of my motion. The first part of my motion, and why even prior to being a city councillor, I felt that this was a necessary step. Um, that it would, I think, make for a much more effective uh, civil service. Bureaucracy is not a word I like to use, but civil service and public service. I think it would um, in inspire a lot of public servants to um, work towards uh, customer service, efficiencies, effectiveness. So uh, having said that, I do also believe that it would be good uh, to have the public participate in this process. So yes, I'm agreeing with you. In, both in your, both your capacities. Absolutely, in both my capacities. That's why I partially, why I have this position. That's why I have this, uh, this stated position and why when we voted on this as a council, and I can't remember how long ago it was, maybe 18 months, uh, that's why I voted the way I did. So, so, so in, I mean, I, my arguments have been that there'll be less, less reports that get lost and, and you know, that, that that in itself will help the, the civil service and make them a little happier with, with doing their work. Yeah, there was hundreds of reports, and just if you use uh, transportation services alone, uh, hundreds of reports were requested this term. Not all of them actually, as you know, being sitting on the committee, uh, not all of them came to fruition, and we'll be looking forward to those next term, but they felt very, um, very overwrought with the number of requests for reports and simply couldn't process them in an expedient way. Thank you. Councillor Purse. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question stems from the fact that you've described this as a binding referendum. So bear with me for just a second. Uh, sometimes, say, August 30th, just to pick a date out of the air, uh, this refer referendum happens. Uh, and because it's binding, we could either have 47 councillors or 25. Does that mean that the clerk has to prepare for both of those elections? And that uh, I have to, you know, I currently have a website, Gord Perks 18, because I would be running in uh, Ward 18 in the new rules. So I have to go in and put in 100 bucks to register for Gord Perks Parkdale High Park and run both campaigns at the same time until the referendum decides which one is happening, or do I simply not campaign and the clerk not prepare until September 1st? If you could just help me understand that. I, I will uh, attempt to do that. Um, so the, my understanding is, and I think it's all of our understandings, is there was just a provincial election just recently, and so a lot of those polling stations have been identified, uh, the boundaries have been identified, uh, a lot of that work has been done in the last uh, probably 18 months to two years um, as, uh, as part and parcel of the province of Ontario's elections team. Um, so I, I think the clerks uh, have maybe not faced this type of challenge before, but I'm sure that they have 
uh, like they did during the appeal process of this undertaking, develop two sets of plans. Uh, that's not uncommon. Uh, they were just, we just knew recently in the last six months that we were going forward this way because it went to the OMB, as you know. Uh, so unfortunately, sometimes we have to have a second set of plans on how to uh, implement and execute campaigns, et cetera, elections. I, I appreciate that thinking, but you know, given that the uh, clerk said that actually a <laughs> municipal election isn't the same thing and we can't use the same voters list, because we have to look at, for example, if people are registered with the French school system or the Catholic school system, uh, and that the ward boundaries of the trustees won't be the same as uh, the federal and provincial ward boundaries, we can't simply use that. So given that the clerk has said the scenario you just described can't possibly happen, do you still think we should prepare for two elections simultaneously? In other words, waste and duplication. So what I would do, so this has been a surprise for all of us. Uh, as I said in my opening comments, uh, we've been blindsided. Nobody knew about this uh, in the chamber and um, we we're all trying to figure out how to uh, adapt and, and modify and work our way through this. So uh, my, my response to you would be you're welcome to amend my motion or uh, modify it. Uh, I would be open to friendly amendments. Thank you. Okay. Our last speaker, Councillor Holland. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, I'm just going to echo a few things that were said uh, by my colleagues. And um, I, too, uh, had heard, obviously, during uh, when Premier Ford was running and also right after the election that the, there was a move to reduce uh, council to 25. But I had also heard that it was in 2022. I had not heard that it was at all during this election and that there would, would definitely not be enough time. Uh, there's, there's many concerns that I have. I remember when we go back to the ward boundary uh, review that we've done and the in-depth review that we did. And I too actually considered the reduction of council just because I think that it would be uh, more efficient and more effective. But having worked federally and provincially, the issue is that the issues are different. And any of us that have worked federally and provincially know that. The number one issue federally that any of us or any of the MPs are dealing with is immigration. Uh, I started off working in Herb Gray's office when I was in my undergrad. And then working at the province, the number, the two biggest issues are education and also healthcare. Th that's what you're getting calls on. And if you compare the number of schools to let's say the number of streets, our workload is exponentially larger. And many of, the, of our colleagues here mentioned today all of the different aspects of the workload at the city level that we do. And that's why during the ward boundary debate, uh, when we were looking at the reduction of, of councillors or moving to the same ward boundaries as the provincial and federal, although I can see it being feasibly done, it didn't seem to me that it would be feasible uh, within the context of that particular review. If we're moving towards that new model, I think that it would have been better to have a review during this let's say the next term of council. Uh, that gives us four, four years. I mean, uh, there's so many aspects of it from the boards, the ABCs, uh, the administrative body, how we're going to do that. I know uh, uh, so many MPPs, Lorenzo had told me about all, all about amalgamation. He was a uh, chair of the NIN, uh, what last and went. I know many of you, I heard many, 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 many stories about amalgamation and what everybody who was here at the time went through and how admin committee was set up and how the amalgamation process went. So in setting up a council and looking at our committees and how that would have to function, that's still something that we would have to review and how does that function? So I'm not sure that this would be uh, uh, prudent to do right now. Uh, at the same time, I'm also in reality that we are creatures of the province and that we also have to look at, I was just looking at the clerk's list on Friday and then again today, and I am concerned about uh, making sure that it's a fair and democratic process and that we hit uh, and make sure that we give the clerks uh, and staff the, the appropriate resources just to make sure that we get everything done. So a lot of these motions I'm going to be supporting. Uh, I wish that it was next term. I just, I'm in reality to uh, the bill that was tabled. I also know that amendments can be made. Uh, is it possible to extend the date? I know I was speaking with a few of my colleagues this morning. 
about possibly reaching out to the Premier and trying to get a movement of that date, uh, at least to, so that the clerks can get this done in a timely manner, because I'm concerned about the fair and democratic process. So uh, I also support the Mayor's and, and Councillor uh, Robinson's motion about a referendum. I think that that's, that would have been, again, something that we would have undertaken. I think that it's something that, that would have been prudent to do on this ballot, this election, and then move into a different, uh, a different type of governance in 2022. So um, with that, I'm not gonna continue on. I just, I know that we're going to get to voting. And uh, it's, again, my last speech here uh, in, in this term of council. And um, I just hope that everything runs smoothly unless we're called back for some emergency uh, council in the interim. Thank you. So the clerk will put up the order for the voting on the screen. And Councillor Cressy, do you have a point of order, Councillor Cressy? Yeah, point of order. Madam uh, Speaker, uh, am I able at this moment to withdraw my motion? Okay. A motion for Councillor Cole to withdraw his motion on favor, carried. Now, Councillor Cressy, you want to withdraw as well? Uh, Speaker, we have two separate motions concerning legal action on the table, 2B and 4. Uh, having spoken with the city solicitor, uh, I've been advised that the strongest course of legal action is motion 4 by Councillor Flesher. So with that, I can be withdrawing 2B, uh, so long as uh, Councillor Flesher, you're not withdrawing 4, right? No. no. Okay. So as long as one of those two can stand, that's fine. I can withdraw 2B as long as 4 is on the table. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Yeah. Okay, we're ready. So our first motion is motion number five uh, by Councillor Desette. There, it's on the screen. On favor? Recorded? Councillor Kelly, please. 
Councillor Trozzi, please. Councillor Sal, please. Councillor Tracy, please. Thank you. Councillor Kelly, Councillor Sal, please. Councillor Kelly, your vote, please. Madam Speaker, motion five carries. The vote is 30 to 11. Okay, motion 1A. So this is now as amended. So this is as amended. Okay, by the mayor as amended. Recorded. Recorded. Councillor Mahavik, Councillor Pillion. Madam Speaker, motion 1A carries. The vote is 28 to 13. Motion 1B by the Mayor. Recorded vote. Councilor Dusat, please. Councilor Wong Tan, please. Motion 1B carries unanimously. The vote is 41 in favor. Okay, motion 1B. Oh, we did 1B. Motion 2A by Councillor Kresge. Uh, Councillor Kresge, sorry. I know. <laughs> Didn't they go bankrupt years ago? Councillor Mahavik, please. Councillor Kelly, please. Motion 2A carries. The vote is 24 to 17. Motion 3. Recorded vote. Councillor Crisanti and Councillor Palacio, please. Okay. 
Motion three carries. The vote is 26 to 15. Motion number eight. Councillor Pasternak, Councillor DiGiorgio, please. Yeah, I just want to move it. Councillor Holland, please. Motion eight carries, thirty one to ten. Motion four as amended. Recorded vote. Councillor Mamaliti, please. Councillor Fletcher. Motion four as amended carries. The vote is 32 to nine. Motion 9 by Councillor Kergiannis. Oh, okay, that's an amendment to Motion 12. No, to 7. Oh, hold on, Councillor Perch. This is redundant. So 12, 9, 7, 9, 12 is redundant. Okay. All right, so, okay, item is amended. Item is amended. We're done. Councillor Thompson, please. Councillor Mahavik, please. The item as amended carries. The vote is 33 to 8. Councillor Fillion. Granted to introduce a bill to confirm. Oh, you didn't. Well, I didn't. I didn't acknowledge or say anything yet. Mm -hmm. Councillor Fillion. Yes. You yes. have a motion to introduce the confirming bill. Yes. That leave be granted to introduce a bill to confirm to okay, the point Okay, hold on, of hold on, hold on. Do, do you have a point of order? Yeah, can I uh, reopen the last vote? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there is a request to reopen.
Okay, so motion to reopen on favor, carried. So on the item, as the item as amended, let's start over again. That was the last vote. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just put everything on hold here. Well, yes, that's what we were planning on doing, but hold on. Councillor Robinson, you got a point of order? Yes, I voted incorrectly on motion A, uh, Councillor Cressy's motion. Motion A. No, I mean, no, but we didn't, uh, we uh, haven't voted on the item as amended yet. No, we're reopening. Oh, I don't care. I'm just saying. Okay. So we've, we've reopened. We have reopened item as amended. Now we're voting on item as amended. Councillor Algemeri, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Kelly, please. Councillor DiGiorgio. Councillor Mahavik, please. Councillor Kelly, please. Madam Speaker, the revote on item as amended carries. The vote is 33 to 8. Okay. Now, Councillor Fillion, you have a motion to introduce the confirming bill. Yes, thank you. That leave be granted to introduce a bill to confirm to the point of the introduction of this motion the proceedings of City Council meeting 44 on July 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, and 30th, 2018. Shall leave be granted to introduce this bill recorded vote? <laughs> Councillor McMahon, please. Councillor Fletcher, Councillor Holland. Councillor Perks, please. Okay, hold on. We have one more vote, please, so don't leave your seats. Councillor DiCiano, please. Councillor Robinson. The introduction of the confirming bill carries. The vote is 36 to 5. Shall this bill be passed and declared as a bylaw recorded vote? <laughs> Councillor Davis? Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor well, Shiner. Hold on, we're in the middle of a vote, Councillor yes. Davis. I want to introduce Howard. What? After. Councillor Mahavik, Councillor DiCiano, Councillor Troisi. The vote to confirm the proceedings of Council carries 36 to 5. Councillor Davis, what was your point? I just, on a point of personal privilege, I want to acknowledge someone who is here today, Howard Mosco. Oh my Lord. Howard is here. It must be the end. And I, I he's taking orders. <laughs> uh, 
don't know how no, many signs I need. No, I, I, do, I do, though, I, I realize that the spirit of Howard was here. Uh, when Councillor Cole moved his motion, I said, that's a Howard motion. And then he appeared. <laughs> anyway, it was great Thank to see you, you, Howard. Thank you, Howard. And, okay, Councillor Fletcher. I, I just wanted to acknowledge today, I'm sure you were going to, our clerks for the extra meeting and oh, all I the was work going for to do all that. of the yes. session. And, and I, I want, and thank you. And I also want to very much thank our acting city manager who won't be acting any longer when the new council, whoever is on it, is reconstructed uh, for all of her work in stepping in and being acting city manager. And, and I would like to thank members of council for the past four years. Thank you very much. And um, oh yeah, we have another meeting. We have another. Thought about it. Even I moved it. I know. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Councillor Mamaliti, you should be one that thanks me. That's right. Should have been thrown out five or six times, and you weren't. <laughs> <laughs>